NBC Sports presents NCAA College Football. Today, a matchup between the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Iowa State Cyclones. Hayden Fry has taken Iowa to two consecutive bowl games for the first time in Hawkeye history. Eddie Phillips, the leading ball carrier, returning from the Big Ten Conference. He'll be a tailback. A new football package at Iowa State with new coach Jim Kreiner. Features senior quarterback David Archer, who threw for nearly 1,500 yards last season. The rain has stopped. The big sellout crowd is now moving in, and we're just about ready for football here at Ames, Iowa. NCAA College Football is sponsored by Chevrolet. Chevrolet is taking charge by Apple Computer. Makers are the versatile Apple IIe, Apple III, and Lisa, the personal computer for the office. And by Texaco, who also brings you quality automotive products that you can trust. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Kurt Gowdy, along with Lee Grosscup, visiting with the two coaches yesterday. Hey, we want to win the game, but what really counts to us is our conference season. We want to be good later on. Don't let them kid you. When you play in the same state against another school and you lose, you hear about it all year from the fans and alumni. And Hayden Fry has it in his craw, Lee, that he's been beaten by Iowa State three years in a row. And by the way, he'll be heavily favored here today. Hayden Fry, of course, is a master of understatement, Kurt, but you know that he wants to win this football game today. And Jim Kreiner is going to really have his hands full as a new coach trying to pull an upset today because they are a decided underdog. Hayden Fry, of course, is long known as one of college football's great innovators, but underneath that facade, I think, is a man who is a true fundamentalist. He will tell you that defense and the kicking game are what win for you. Now, Jim Kreiner, conversely, is a guy who believes in the concept of a ball control passing offense, but also, like Hayden Fry, he feels that you have to play defense and, and have a good kicking game in order to win. There are always a lot of questions at an opening game, but I don't believe there's a question about the quarterback each team has. They're both experienced, they're stable, and they can do it. Well, David Archer on the left is one of the better all-purpose quarterbacks in the Big Eight this year. He can throw the ball and he can run just about equally well. He also executes the option play very effectively, and I think he is going to fit in very nicely in the new offensive schemes of Coach Jim Kreiner. Now, Chuck Long is the most accurate passer returning to the Big Ten. If you count the Peach Bowl last year, he threw better than 65 percent. He has the size you like. He's 6'4", 200 pounds, and he can also be effective as a running quarterback. I think the two best athletes on the field will be in the linebacking position. Well, if you're talking the Hawkeyes, by the way, you're talking about uh, Washington and uh, Station, and they are two of the best. Chris Washington is the leading tackler in the Big Eight last year with 98 solo tackles, and Larry Station is a man who was a freshman All-American last season. He was the team's leading tackler, Kurt, despite the fact that he only played as a starter in about half the season. And I think sincerely that he has the potential to be one of the great defensive players in Iowa history. This series goes back to 1894. It was interrupted for 43 years, then resumed. Iowa State has been dominating in recent years. They've won the last three. So you have the Iowa Hawkeyes in here for some deep revenge today. The Hawkeyes are on the field. They're meeting at uh, the 50-yard line. We're waiting for Iowa State. And while they come on out, we will be back for the opening kickoff right after this message here from the Iowa State Stadium in Ames, Iowa. <laughs> Iowa has won the toss. They've elected to receive. Iowa State will kick off from your left. They'll be in the red or the dark jerseys. They'll have a slight 10 mile an hour wind at their back in the first period. Iowa's in white, trimmed in black and gold. And going back now on the kickoff team, we'll spot them for you. The fullback, Norm Granger, is going to be number 26. And we have Ronnie uh, Harmon, 
Number 31, a speedster. He'll play uh, flanker today, maybe a little bit of tailback. They like to move him around, get the ball to him. 26 is Granger, 31, Ronnie Harmon. Iowa State has not broken out yet. Remember last year, Iowa lost, got only five first downs against Iowa State. Couldn't muster any kind of an offense. But then the Hawkeyes got hot in the last half of the year, won eight out of ten, and defeated Tennessee in the Peach Bowl. So the last two years, they won eight and lost four. And before that winning season, year before last, you had to go back to 1961, Lee, before Iowa had a winning year. Hayden Fry has really turned the program around. He has won eight of his last ten games. He was coming in here with a three-game winning streak, including that sensational Peach Bowl victory over Tennessee. Interesting on the kickoff. Iowa State will kick off every time from the left hash mark. They will try to kick the ball in the left corner. In other words, give Iowa a narrow lane to return the kickoff. The right side of the Iowa State team will go down the right sideline and form the wall. There's a kick heading to the corner. And the kick is out of bounds. And we were talking to the coach about that. And we said, do you kick out of bounds much? He said, maybe sometime. Now they're going to bring it back for a touchback. Here's the Iowa offense. Chuck Long will be a quarterback. Owen Gill is the tailback, 33. Norm Granger, good runner blocker, is the fullback. There's the uh, wing back, Bill Brohammer. He'll be number 27, by the way, in the game. Dave Mortz is the uh, split end. He's number five. They'll have the offensive line for you. Back row is uh, kicking off. Mark Backrow from Rockford, Illinois. Now again, they'll spot that ball on the hash mark. And again, he'll try and kick it into the left corner. And try and wall off so Iowa has to return the ball up their right sideline without an open field to go for. Now let's see if he can be a little bit more accurate with this one. Kicking off from his 35. And he boots it the opposite way this time. Ranger on the 15 to the 20. Ranger to the 25. He's over the 30, and he's all down at the 35. Excellent return by Granger. He's tackled by Mike Posey, number 85, who's a reserve flanker. John Alt, Tim Hanna, guard, Joe Hilgenberg of the Hilgenberg families at center. Ralph, John Ralk is the right guard, and Joe Lavellis is the right tackle. A big, experienced line. That's Mike Hufford, the tight end. This is the best offensive line that Hayden Fry says he's ever coached. First down, Iowa on their 36. Chuck Long barking no signal. Here's the ball off to Granger. Granger spinning away, down to the 43. Norm Granger weighs 220 from Newark, New Jersey. He's hit by Lester Williams, the outside linebacker. All right, there's the defense. Three down linemen, Youngblood, Moore, and Little. The linebackers are Lubers, Fisher, Washington. Keep your eyes on him, number 54, Lester Williams. Baker, Williams, the corners, McHugh, and Walker, the safety man. Second down three, Iowa on its 43, just underway. The rain has stopped, the sun is coming through. It's cooler than yesterday. It was a better day for football. Ranger again, rips for the first down. He's away at the 45 to 40. And down he goes at the 39. Norm Granger brought down by the safety man, George Walker. He nearly broke that one, Lee. I saw him break one last year in a ball game against Indiana when he took a little screen pass out in the right flat and turned it into a 63-yard touchdown. Kurt, he's 220 pounds, but he has good open field speed, as do the other running backs, Gill and Phillips. So you really have three guys there who can double both as short yardage men and be game breakers. 18-yard pickup for Norm Granger. First down, Iowa on the Iowa State 39-yard line. In the I formation. Owen Gill has the call. Gill 35, he's to the 30, to the 25. He's inside the 20. Flags go down. George Walker again had to make the hit. Now, Iowa can play you, as Hayden Fry said, we'll toss the coin. If you want us to run, we'll run at you. If you want us to pass, we'll pass at you. We'll go either way. It doesn't matter to us. 
It's the definitive tailback play in the I formation. It's the blast or isolation play off the left side. Good lead block that time by the fullback. And Owen Gill, who was second in rushing last year to Eddie Phillips, turns it into a good gainer. Kurt is going to come back. It's a clipping call. And right now, that Iowa offensive line is tearing the Iowa State defense apart. Massive line and experience. They have one, two, Flipping. three, four, five seniors. Offense still first down. Still a first down. Play went for 15, was called back. First and 10, Iowa on the Iowa State 39. No score, 1340 to go in the first period. Chuck Long from Wheaton, Illinois. Remember another player from Wheaton? Did he wear 77? That is number 33, Owen Gill. He's to the 32. The Galloping Ghost, Red Grange, the Wheaton Iceman. The Wheaton Iceman, yep. Doug Fisher, the linebacker from Maslin, Ohio, made that stop for the Cyclones. Owen Gill stepped in for Phillips last year when he was injured, finished the season strong, and he's won the first string job. Although he and Eddie Phillips will alternate play about the same time this year. They are pretty much interchangeable at that tailback position. Gill a little bit bigger, a little bit more of a slashing type runner. Eddie Phillips will juke you a little bit more. Second down, three, Iowa. First man through, that's Norm Granger. Ranger stopped at the 28-yard line of Iowa State. Right now, the Hawkeyes are taking it to him on the ground. Doug Fisher made the initial hit on Granger. And it is going to be uh, a first down. Iowa first down on the Iowa State 28-yard line. Not surprising with the strength being in the offensive line, as you mentioned, that they would want to come out and run the ball if they were effective running it. As you mentioned, that's what Hayden Fry said. If we're effective running, we'll run. If we pass well, we'll pass a lot. Well, Jordan, 15 replaces uh, Brohammer. Brohammer at the wing back, first down. Owen Gill to the 25-yard line. Running the belly series, taking to the fullback first up the middle and giving off to Gill, who is smacked down by Lester Williams, the outside linebacker from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Hayden Fry is very multiple in his offensive approach. When I was playing for Jack Curtis at the University of Utah, he used to refer to our offense as a smorgasbord offense because he said we'd show you a little bit of everything. Hayden Fry is kind of that way. And from time to time today, we may even see the shotgun. Dave Moore flanks to the left. He's their best receiver. Now they hop around into the eye. Second down, seven Iowa on the Iowa State 25. Gill. They got him at the 24. Hopping right on him was Steve Little, the defensive right end, number 93. Well, that's the first time they really stopped that uh, running attack. And this Iowa. is the first time I would say we would see what might be called an obvious pass situation. Remember that Chuck Long is a guy who likes the sprint out pass, and he favors the wide side of the field normally, so we might see a sprint out pass here by Long coming toward this side of the field. He hit his first 11 passes against Tennessee in the Peach Bowl, completed 65% last year, leading efficiency in the Big Ten. He'll throw on third and six. They set up a screen to give it to Granger at the 20 to 15 to 10. He may go, and Granger's in for the touchdown. On the screen, they let him come through. Perfect timing on it, and Granger goes 24 yards. John Relk, the guard, Number 66 through the key block, and Iowa looked awesome on that opening drive. That was a perfectly executed, slow-developing screen, and on the slow-developing screen, the thing that you have to be is an actor. Look at this, Kurt. He looks downfield first, and it looks like a normal pass. Then he sets up the screen perfectly, gets the ball out in the flat to Granger, picks up a convoy of blockers, and follows particularly Relk and Hilgenberg into the end zone for the first touchdown of the day. Tom Nickel from Green Bay, Wisconsin, who will do both the place kicking and punting. We'll try the point. The kick is up. And the kick is good. So Iowa has struck with 11 minutes and three seconds to go in the first period. And our score, the University of Iowa, seven. Iowa State University, nothing. For 18 yards, another for nine. He caught the screen pass, 24 for the touchdown. And he can run out of that fullback spot, and he can also block. 
5 11 220 pound senior and he is a guy who can really be dangerous and hurt you a lot of different ways. I saw him turn a screen pass into a 63 yard touchdown last year in the ball game against Indiana went the other way that time this time it was in the left flat. He's very effective in a lot of different ways. Don Relic the guard kicks a short one coming to the 25 and down there to a short man who is Tim Iverson from Sioux City Iowa. Now we'll see Iowa State on the attack for the first time. That's a strange decision by Iverson to yeah. down the football there. I at least would have dived forward and picked up another three yeah. or four yards. Iowa State will have David Archer at quarterback, number 18. The fullback is Jason Jacobs, 32. The tailback, Tommy Davis, 22. Tracy Henderson, 89, the flanker. And the other uh, split will be Robbie Miner, number 87. That's Jacobs in motion. They're in the spread. They have a quick hit pattern out to the 30, breaking away. 35 to the 40. And run out of bounds with Tracy Henderson. Iowa State gets the first down in the first play. Henderson is their best receiver. He'll catch anything near him. That's the backfield we just talked about. There's Tracy Henderson who just got that pass. Robbie Miner, the other wide receiver. First down, Iowa State on their 46. That play went for 20. This is a very young team, Iowa State. They're really in a rebuilding process, and what they have to avoid is getting wiped out here early so they can get some confidence and poise. Iowa's a veteran team. They have 16 starters back out of 22 from last year. The pitch, Davis nearly fumbled the ball. The timing was all off on that play. Even the ball from center was, it was off. Strobel and Little, the right side, made the tackle. There's the offensive line. Reimers uh, was a doubtful, but he's in there. Meyer, the center. Nelson at right guard. And Eggleston down from 320 to 290 is a right tackle. Tight end is Brett Blaney. Q Freckles it's on the 43 yard line of Iowa State. Second down 12. 7 nothing Iowa. Quick toss. He's hit immediately. Tommy Davis racked up by Tony Wankett, number 92, the defensive end who intercepted a pass man for a touchdown. There are the linebackers in the line. Wankett. Hufford, Peterson, up front, Little, Strobel, Gatulo, and Larry Station. Watch him today, a sensational sophomore. The cornerbacks are Hunter and Creer, Chambers and Holly are the safety men. Now we have a third down 11. Richard Hansen is in the game, number 37. Curtis Levingston, 84. Itty bitty, they call him, very fast. Obvious passing down on third and 11. They got a big rush on him. They got him. Number 64, Paul Hufford hit him from Mount Vernon, Iowa. He had a clear path to him, and he just didn't waste any time. Nobody picked him up at all. 6'3", 260-pound junior. Look at this. That is a direct run to the quarterback by Paul Hufford, the left tackle defensively, who just shot through the gap and ran down quarterback David Archer, number 18. The safety man is a freshman from Dallas, Texas, a track star, a world-class printer, Robert Smith. And here's the punter, Kelly Goodburn from Cushing, Iowa. He'll kick with a slight wind at his back. Low one to get a return here. Smith at the 20, 25, finds the crack, 30, 40, 45 and spun out of bounds, but the freshman on his first punt return in college football gets 32 yards on it, and Jim Lubers drove him out. We'll be back with more action. It's Iowa 7 and Iowa State nothing. Well, so far, the experience of Iowa is showing uh, in the opening seven minutes of this game. Lee Groskup. That is going to be a key factor today, Kurt. We were concerned about the fact that Hayden Fry has maybe the best talent he's ever had at Iowa. Experience versus inexperience in a brand new program under Coach Jim Kreiner for the Clones. 
Here's a spread. Now they uh, go into a standard set. Eddie Phillips is in a tailback replacing Owen Gill. First down, Iowa. Iowa State 48. And hit at the 50, getting away to the 45 is Granger, Norm Granger. Showed you how powerful he is, though. He breaks tackles behind the line of scrimmage. He should have been tackled for a loss that time, but uh, picked himself up three yards. Second and seven for Iowa. More crossfire action in the backfield that time, faking first to the tailback and then coming to the fullback, Norm Granger. And you saw, indeed, the leg strength that Kurt was talking about as he broke a tackle behind the line of scrimmage and turned it into a two or three yard gain, what looked like was going to be a loss. Ronnie Harmon to the left, Dave Morris to the right, off the eye. Long will throw it. Long on the swing, out at the 45 to the 40, 35, and down at the 31 is the tailback, Eddie Phillips, an excellent receiver coming out of the backfield. He was leading the Big Ten in rushing, and then he went down with an injury in his seventh game, but he might have won the Big Ten rushing title last year. Well, he had eight, six yards. 806 yards, exactly right. Iowa on the Iowa State 31. Iowa leading 7-0. We're approaching seven and a half minutes to play in the first period here at Ames, Iowa. Sellout crowd over 50,000. We've had alternate range this morning, right up until game time. First down, Iowa. And Iowa State's got to dig in now and do something here with them. Hammering to the 26 is Eddie Phillips again. Jim Luber's is 48. Look at the returning starters. Iowa State returning only six. Iowa, 15 first stringers back from the both the offense and the defense. Nine out of 11 on offense. They know what they're doing out there. And they have all of the firepower back from last year. All of the people who accounted for their total offense numbers last year, the runners, the passers, the receivers, all back. In the eye. again. They stop him at the 25. Phillips is more the darting uh, runner. Owen Gill, the other tailback, has those uh, slide moves. That's that percent we were talking about, Chuck Long. He's very accurate. That is counting the Peach Bowl game. During the regular season, he was 6-4-2. And then he had a great game against Tennessee in the Peach Bowl, wound up with 6-5-2 on the year. Love Jordan flanks left, Dave Moore to the right. Third down and four for the Hawkeye. He'll throw. Lots of time. Now only rushing. And we're bringing down just short of the 25. Lester Williams blitzed him, the outside linebacker, 45. And Roger Youngblood got to him, number 99. He had time, couldn't find anybody open, decided to take off, and that's when they nailed him. Field goal team coming on. That was an important defensive play for the Cyclones because now if they can hold them here, they could get the ball back and maybe develop something. Had Iowa gone down there and scored a second touchdown, it might have really turned the momentum too drastically in their direction. The kicking game is the question mark of Iowa this year. They lost their nation's leading punter, Reggie Roby. Here's a 30, 42 yard attempt, and that kick is good. He's got it. 42 yards by Tom Nickel. It didn't look pretty, but it was between the goalposts. So Iowa now with 5.07 to go in the first period leads Iowa State by a score of 10 to nothing. There's the man that just kicked the 42-yard field goal, Tom Nickel. And kicking off will be the guard, John Relic. The deep man is the speechster, the member of the track team, Michael Wade. And squibbed down and is touched, and now they're in trouble. He's at the four, he's out to the 10, to the 15. They can't get field position. He's down just over the 20-yard line, and he's hit there by Ken Sims, number nine. Iowa State has not been out of its own territory. Iowa's completely dominated this game so far. So uh, what can a young team do now, Lee? 
They're going to have to do what they do best, Kurt. And remember that, as I said earlier, Jim Kreiner believes in the concept of a ball control passing offense, sort of like the San Francisco 49ers employ under Coach Bill Walsh. And I think they're going to go to work with that along with some basic running plays. Quarterback is David Archer on first down. He gives a draw play. Up over the 25 to the 28 is the fullback, Jason Jacobs from Chicago. At a 4.9 average last year. And he also was the leading pass receiver on the team. Jason Jacobs and Tommy Davis both came back to camp in very good shape this year. Both are playing about 10 pounds lighter than last season. And I think that they are a good complement to that ball control passing attack. They put in a rigorous physical program here. They got rid of their machines and went to free weight lifting. Hired the assistant uh, strength coach of Nebraska. This is out to Jacobs. Jacobs trying to get a first down and he's smacked at the 28 yard line. Paul Hufford. The ball is thrown a little bit high to him up there on that swing pass. It was a variation of the sideline screen that we saw earlier, and that's really one of the fundamental plays when you talk about ball control passing. They use a lot of different screens and they use a lot of different draw plays. Well, they need two yards to get a first down or they'll have to give the ball up again to Iowa. Iowa leading 10-0, 352. Here's the pitch to the tailback, Davis. And he fumbles the ball, and let's see who's got it. He got up to the 30, and then was bounced backwards on a tremendous hit there. Cyclone's got it back, Kurt. A lucky break for them, or Iowa would have that ball deep in their territory. Mike Yucolo made the hit on him from Deerfield, Illinois. Again, Iowa State must punt, and the little freshman track man who returned his first college punt for 32 yards. Robert Smith is back as a safety man on the 30-yard line. ABC's NCAA College Football continues next Saturday with more great regional action. Check your local listings for the game and times in your area. Doing the punting will be Kelly Goodburn. Smith is deep right. Perfect snap. This is another, uh, well, not quite as low. Smith on the 28. Ball's down on the 28. It rained hard before the game. The rug may be a little bit slippery. 3.05 to go in the first period. Iowa leading Iowa State 10 to nothing. We're back here, Ames, Iowa. Three minutes, five seconds to go in the first period. The Iowa Hawkeyes had the ball on their 29 with a first down, a touchdown and a field goal. They have completely dominated this game. Iowa State's made only one first down. Had to punt twice. Long on the pitch to the tailback. Phillips out to the 30. 35. Cracks it over the 40. Down to the 42-yard line by Chris Washington, the All-American candidate, the inside linebacker, senior from Chicago. Chris Washington, who we talked about at the top of the show, led the Big Eight last season in solo tackles. Look at the pursuit. He comes all the way across the field from his inside linebacker position to make the open field tackle on number 22, Eddie Phillips, who went a power pitcher on the left side. Iowa has five first downs. Iowa State has one. Double fake. Swing pass. Complete to Phillips out to the 50. Rolls and maybe has another first down. Alvin Baker, the cornerback, had to take him. That's twice they threw that screen pass out wide to the tailback, leaving the backfield. Beautifully executed play, and one of the reasons you can be so effective on this is because they have established a running game with their fullback. The fake goes first to Granger, and then they swing the ball out to number 22, Eddie Phillips, after Long had looked long. I like that. Long, long. Iowa on the Iowa State 48. Six first downs for Iowa. One for Iowa State. First man through is Granger. He pounds his way over the 40 to the 39. Another nine yards. Just short of 10. Doug Fisher had to tackle him. Clock moving, and Iowa's eating him up right now on the ground, and when they have to, in the air. They have a buried attack. Aiden Fry said he can throw 50% of the time or run 50%. If they play the pass, he'll run. If they play the put eight men up, he'll pass. And he has a very balanced game, a veteran team. This looks like an excellent football team that we've seen so far that's going to challenge strenuously for the Big Ten Championship. 
Bush and Gill are in now in the backfield. They have the lone setback. That's Fred Bush from New Jersey, a junior, and he should have the first down. Hayden Fry is now in his 22nd year as a Division I coach, and he told us yesterday, Kurt, that this is the best balanced team that he has ever had. He has had some great passing teams, some great running teams. He has had teams that played great defense, but now this team appears, at least right now, to have all of the above. Never forget those great passing teams he had when he was at SMU. Oh, yeah. He threw uh, one game at Ohio State. His team threw 76 passes and got beat. Fred Bush. Here's the pitch to Owen Gill. Gill circles 35 and is banged down at the 31-yard line. Iowa's leaving that line of scrimmage with that massive senior interior line and just wiping them out. They have five guys up front who average about 265, 270 across. Hayden told us yesterday that every one of his front five have pro potential. Well, they look like it. Second down, four. There's the first down, 7 to 1 Iowa. Crowd very quiet here as they watch the hometown fans, watch their young Iowa State team fight for their lives to keep this from mounting already in the first period. Second and four. That's the tailback, Gill. He is over the 25 to the 20. He may go. He does. Owen Gill scores, and Iowa leads 17 to 16 to nothing. Owen Gill going 31 yards. John Relic again through the key block. Well, Iowa came in here wanting this one after losing to Iowa State the last three years. Crossfire action in the backfield off that left side. Once again, Relk getting a block. He gets lots of blocks. But there you see some of the great athletic ability of number 33, Owen Gill, who has been both a soccer player and a rugby player, as well as a football player. He has quite a background. Interesting. And he shows you some of his talent in the open field. He was born in Jamaica, then went to London, where he played soccer. The kick is up. And the kick is good. Watch the blocking they're getting from that offensive line. And we told you about those slide moves of Gill. He can change direction. Look at the blocking from all over the place. Moritz comes down, gets a block from his wide receiver position. And there is that juke step. What a move right there at the end by number 33, Owen Gill. 31-yard run for that man. Soccer's his love. Came from London to the United States. Played only his senior year in high school for football. Happy man right now. You remember, uh, let's see, who was it? Uh, Dickerson and Craig last year with SMU to field back. James. Yeah, yeah Craig James. James. Yeah. These, these fellows have a great one-two punch themselves at tailback and Owen Gill and Eddie Phillips. I would say that's a good comparison. They're, based on what we've seen today, they're liable to roll up those kind of numbers. John Relk will kick off. We have Wade Deep, Michael Wade. This is a high one, and it's tumbling to Michael Wade. Takes it on the 14 to the 20, over the 25, and out to the 28-yard uh, or 29-yard line. George Little, a defensive lineman, went down to cover it. It's first down Iowa State. They're on their own 29-yard line. They have not left their own territory yet. 38 seconds to go in the first period. Trailing by 17 points, it's very important right now for the Cyclones to get something going. It's no time to panic, but they need a good drive to build their confidence back. They have Davis at tailback, Jacobs at fullback, quarterback is Archer. There's the option. Tailback, Davis over the 30, and out to the 35, comes over the 40, and has a first down. Paul Hufford, the left tackle, trailed the play and bumped him out of bounds. Second first down for Iowa State. Those are the numbers on Tommy Davis from last season. And we talked earlier about how David Archer is one of the better all-purpose quarterbacks in the Big Eight and is effective in executing the option play. Made a little reverse spin that time, came to the corner and pitched to Davis, 
coming uh, around the left side. They're in their slot right formation. Now Davis leaves the backfield. Here's a quick one over the head, a little high to the tie to uh, Robbie Miner in the slot. And he knows that Archer said I had him wide open. And it's intercepted. That's right, it glanced off, picked off by number 21. Trying to come up the slot, and the ball is thrown high. And there is the interception right there by number 21, Devin Mitchell, for the Hawkeyes. And once again, they have very opportunistic field position. Well, they had him wide open. Archer was mad at himself. He threw the ball higher. He might have had another first down. Now Iowa's got the ball right back again. They were in the single back offense. They went motion to the right, and they were simply putting the man in the slot up the seam. And he was wide open. Had Devin that Mitchell. ball been thrown on target, they would have had a good gainer. There's Devin Mitchell, number 21. This goes back to the 29 of Iowa. Let's get the penalty. After the interception, first down and 15. Personal foul after the interception. First and 15. Iowa's on their 29. They're ahead in this game. 17-0, 28 seconds remain in the first period. In the I formation, Eddie Phillips to tailback. Long to throw. Sails it down the middle, it's complete. The number 31, Ronnie Harmon. Harmon, a very versatile player. A New Yorker. Kevin Williams tackled him. Uh, doesn't matter how they go, through the air, on the ground. Chuck Long is off to a perfect start. We talked about him being the most accurate passer in the Big Ten last season and the great game he came off of in the Peach Bowl. And here he looks to his right, throws back to his left. Ronnie Harmon there on an out route, and that ball, it was right on the numbers. That's about as perfect as you can get. Four for four for 74 yards and one touchdown. That screen pass to Granger for Chuck Long. Still 19 seconds left. The pitches to Phillips. Tries to cut back and goes down on his 45. One of the few times anyone's been stopped today in that Iowa offense. Doug Fisher was standing there, but really his, his own feet. Well, Bob Hayden Fry, we, excuse me, Kurt. Hayden Fry had uh, Chuck Hickson and Mike Livingston at SMU, but he likes Chuck Long. There's the gun. That's the end of the first quarter. Iowa pounding it out has a 17 to nothing lead over Iowa State. All right, a narrow squeeze for Michigan. Picked along as usual with Ohio State, but this Iowa team right with him for the Big Ten title. Second and 10, that passes to Harmon. They overthrew him that time. Ronnie Harmon, the sophomore. He has a brother on the team also. They used to refer to the Big Ten as the Big Two Little Eight. All of that has changed in recent years. Iowa's in the hunt, Illinois. And it was also a, a real three yard and a cloud of dust conference. Remember that? And now they're the passingest conference in NCAA football, right. in Division One. Third down, 10 and a half, Iowa on the Iowa State 46. Norm Granger in there, Chuck Long with the time. The pass is complete. And they stop him at the 40. That's Granger who caught the ball. Remarkable athlete. He has good hands. He can block. He can sprint. And he can get you the tough stuff inside the tackles. Fourth and three. Tom Nickel. They place kicker punters on. Long now five of six in the passing department for 79 yards, including that touchdown to Norm Granger. Not a bad season start, huh? Well, let's see if he actually punts. He is. He's trying to hooch it up, but this one is going to bound into the end zone for a touchback. Iowa State did stop them. Maybe a little uh, heartening for their defense, and Iowa State will come back and put the ball in play on their own 20-yard line. They have not crossed the 50-yard line yet, the Cyclones. There's your score, 17-0 Iowa. Here are the first downs, 9-2, rushing. Look at that, Iowa State hasn't had a yard rushing. Passing yards total, 184-21. to 21. 
Iowa State committed one turnover. Iowa's recorded one sack. And that bottom line important, too. Time of possession. Iowa kept the ball for more than 10 minutes in the first quarter. David Archer at quarterback. He'll be by himself when he goes back there. Throws that one high over Tracy Henderson's head. Archer is not accurate so far. He's a little wild high. Three or four of his passes have been high. He's been pressured though Kurt and also the coverage has been effective for Iowa in the secondary. He had a blitz on by the inside linebacker Larry Station. However his numbers aren't that bad. He's three of five but for only 21 yards. So yeah. completions have been behind the line of scrimmage. Second down 10. Iowa State on his 20 trailing 17 nothing. 14 to go in the half. And here's the option play. Archer's out to the 25 on the counter pivot. He was going to toss, but saw the opening, went himself, and he ran into the arms of Larry Station from Omaha, Nebraska. Larry Station has an interesting stance. Sometimes he lines up just like a tailback, number 36. He's the guy we talked about at the very top of the show. Look how he's blocked first, then he gets up and comes back into the action and winds up making the tackle on David Archer, the quarterback, who had run the counter option away from him. He's also a straight-A student, Larry Station. One of the best student at Iowa University. Third and five. Pump fakes, throws the ball out. Uh, I don't know how he got it there, but he did to Tracy Henderson. That was desperation time. I, I, he, was, he was confused, and I think he just let her go and it right into the arms of Henderson. We happened to be just standing there. David Archer is a good athlete. He pump faked. He was moving to his right and threw back to his left. Watch the pump right here. There it is. Now he makes a move to his right, and now he's going to throw back to his left to Tracy Henderson, number 89, who has come back in from his wide receiver position. He saw that Archer was in trouble, and he curled back in toward the football, which Very was important. an important move. Yep. Always come back toward that ball. First down, Iowa State. Their second first down of the game. They're on their 36-yard line. Pitches to Tommy Davis. He sort of tripped as he started on his takeoff, picked up maybe nothing, maybe a yard. Tony Wankett, the defensive left end from Atkinson, Illinois, starter last year as a sophomore. There's the other end, 97. They have an outstanding pair of defensive ends in that Iowa defensive line. Strobel is indeed an outstanding athlete. In fact, he was a 6'8 high jumper in high school. Hayden Fry told us yesterday he has the potential to be an All-American. Split backfield. Second down, 10, draw play, nowhere. Trying to draw, Jason Jacobs picks up a yard. They had the right idea, but Iowa didn't agree with it. <laughs> they usually don't. Third down, nine, Robbie Miner, Curtis Levingston, the little itty bitty guy. There's Jim Kreiner, the new coach. Levingston is flanked to this side. Lone setback. See this a lot this year. Throws and Collie. The big rush is on him. Trying to get outside. He'll take off. They've got him, though. And down he goes. He'll have to punt. He's short of the 40. David Archer, of course, was the hero in Iowa State's upset victory last year over Iowa. He accounted for 121 yards of total offense in that game. And uh, unfortunately, Iowa State faded at the end of last year. Donnie Duncan lost his last four games. He retired to private business. And then they brought on Jim Kreiner, who had four Big Sky titles when he was at Boise State. Kelly Goodburn will punt, and Robert Smith, the little freshman, back to receive it. Goodburn's twice for 49 yards. They think he has the potential to average 45 yards a kick this year. Another low job, Smith on his 28 with a 30. Oh, he's hammered down there. And right on him is number 27, Tommy Andrews, a reserve cornerback. Excellent punt coverage. We'll be back with the score. Iowa 17, Iowa State nothing. We're back here at Iowa State Stadium, Ames, Iowa, 1041 to go in the first half. Iowa leading. With 17 first quarter points, 17 to nothing. Iowa has the ball. 
They're on their own 28-yard line in the I formation. Chuck Long, a double fake, shoots it down the middle. Ranger has it. Ranger into Iowa State territory to the 45. George Walker had to tackle him there. And Norm Granger's having a field day here in the first half. That was a perfectly executed play action fake. Watch this as you see the crossfire action in the backfield. Actually, Granger was the first fake on it. And then he circles out of the backfield from left to right and catches the ball up the middle from Chuck Long, who again was perfect with his delivery and is now six of seven in the passing department for a considerable yardage. Rangers three out of 56. Long swings it out to the tailback to the 40. Owen Gill down to the 35. That's worked for him all day. Yeah, and Lee Gross, Grosscup, a former All-American passer at Utah, will tell you that's it looks an easy pass that swing, but you got to lead that receiver just perfectly out there. Actually, the swing is not an easy pass to throw, Kurt. That's a good, uh, accurate assessment. The play-action fake right here. Now you see what he has to do is he has to throw this ball with touch and timing. He has to take a little something off the ball. And look at the strength of number 33, Owen Gill, in the open field. As you see, a man who has the speed along with that power. Iowa on the state 35 for another first down. Long going to the air. He's going deep to Harmon and a great catch down there. Ronnie Harmon has it from Laurelton, New York, right in front of Kevin Williams. A leaping grab. This fellow's quite an athlete, this Harmon. What a start Chuck Long is off to. He's picking up right where he left off. He was the MVP in the Peach Bowl last year in the ball game against Tennessee. And he's now eight of nine in the passing department for 143 yards. And he already has one touchdown pass. He is throwing all types of passes, drop backs, sprint out, and play action passes. That was a 28 yard pass play. Push. In there for blocking power. There's Owen Gill. Gill is met and driven out of bounds on the two or three yard line of Iowa State by Kevin Williams, the right cornerback who transferred from San Diego City College. Ranger and Bush, two fullbacks, were out blocking for him. He had some power there going. They seem to have almost perfect balance thus far between the running and the passing game. We talked about this earlier. It's because of the strength of that offensive line. We talk about it a lot about the sophistication of offensive and defensive schemes, but it's really those blockers up front that make the difference. There goes Gill. He scores. Owen Gill has his second touchdown of the game. As he drives over from two yards out, and Iowa now has 23 on the board. Iowa State's not been in Iowa territory yet. And the experience that we talked about, particularly in the offensive line, beginning to pay off. Look at this formation. It's the power eye. And look how the two tight ends line up. They are not in a down position. They're in an up position. And this gives them something to think about because they wonder about the pass. But what they do is that they come with the typical tailback blast play, and they really get a surge. Senate number 17, Granger number 26, leading the way. And the kick by Nickel is up. The kick is good. Watch this power. Watch the two fullbacks. They're both in the backfield. 17 is Senate, 26 is Granger as we rerun this. Two tight ends, and here it is, Lee. Senate and Granger leading the way for Owen Gill, number 33. And that is a great move by Gill as he leaps for the end zone. We'll be back with more action at Ames, Iowa. It's now Iowa 24, Iowa State nothing. The deep man is Curtis Levingston. Got him in there now. He's a scat back. He's a, 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 a wide receiver. Only weighs 140. He is the smallest player in the Big 8 Conference. A booming kick by Ralph. This will chase Levingston back. He'll down it for a touchback. It'll be first down, Iowa State. So far, Kurt, Iowa appears to have everything. They have size, they have speed, experience. And I think probably if they had that one guy back, Reggie Roby, they would have everything. Reggie Roby, of course, set an NCAA hunting record last year, averaging 49.8. Look at the dominance of the Hawkeyes thus far in the football game. Well, all Iowa State can do is stay in there and battle. They're trailing 24-0. A very young team and a rebuilding under a new coach. First down, Iowa State. 
They have the ball off to Tommy Davis, and Tommy Davis is out to the 24-yard line. Thus far, Kurt, Jim Kreiner's worst fears have been realized. When we talked to him yesterday and we talked about what he feared most, he said, their experience versus our inexperience. That has been the case so far. It hasn't been a lot of turnovers or mistakes, though. It's just been Iowa State's been uh, outmatched, overpowered, and out finessed. Absolutely. Second down six. Counter play. And out to the 26 is the quarterback, David Archer. They're all in on him. George Little sort of chased him down from the right tackle position of Iowa. Iowa, if it had another question mark with his front three this year, they're all new in there. Hufford at left tackle. Peterson, the nose guard. Little, the right tackle. The offensive line is almost back intact. Uh, they have all the backs, the skill players back. On defense, and the linebackers are back, but it was the Front three, the middle of that defensive line they were concerned about. Third down and five. Look out, he's decked there by, who's on him there? Strobel. Another sack. No, it would maybe, uh, let's see. Maybe Hedgeman. 93, I believe. That's the second sack I was at. Let's see who gets the hit here. David yeah. Archer State drop back passing. And uh, Wank, Tony Wankin, he is the man him. that yeah. uh, got the interception in the ball game last year. And he's the one who sacks David Archer and says, welcome. They had a fumble, but it was a, the uh, ball was already dead. They had 10 men on the field to add to their miseries here. Now they're all set for the punt. Kelly Goodburn to kick to Robert Smith. He's got to get this ball up in the air a little bit more. There's a low one again. Maybe he'll get the bounce on it for him. Wobbling around. Iowa will have the ball in Iowa State territory. Another good field position to start operating. Just a 33-yard kick. We'll be back. Iowa leading 24-0. All right, Jimmy. Not much to cheer about for these Cyclone fans. Iowa out in front, 24-0, 7-5 to play in the first half. Iowa has the ball on the 49 of Iowa State with a new quarterback, second stringer Tom Grogan from Kansas City, Kansas. Grogan keeps it being chased, throws on the run, and that ball is over the head of the freshman Robert Smith, the world-class printer and the punt returner. Kevin Williams was dogging him down that sideline. They don't lose much with Tom Grogan at quarterback. In fact, Hayden Fry said that the quarterback position was as competitive as any position during the spring. Grogan uh, threw for 266 yards in the spring game, 13 of 16 in that ball game, and he was the starter in this game last year. Long leaves the game, eight of nine in the passing department for 143 yards and one touchdown. Well, I'll tell you, Grogan must be some quarterback if he's going to beat Long out. Way Long looked here. He'll throw again. There's that swing out to Eddie Phillips at the 45. They're riding down at the 44 of Iowa State. Chris Washington coming over to cover the play, the inside linebacker. That is now the third or fourth time they have used that exact play with great effectiveness. They fake to the fullback up the middle. And then what happens is you get a little swing pass out to uh, Phillips or Gill, the, uh, the tailback. And uh, it has been a, a play that the Hawkeyes have executed extremely effectively. We have a flag down. This is just the uh, second penalty of the game, third penalty. Illegal use of hands, offense, still second down. Illegal use of hands. This puts the ball back on the Iowa 46. Chuck Long right there taking a breather, and what a start he's off to. And uh, at the rate he's going, he could be the all Big Ten quarterback. Maybe. Possibly all American. That's right. Iowa now has had three penalties for 35 yards. Iowa State has not been penalized. This is second down and 15. Rogan. Fires it, it is well covered and incomplete. Intended for J.C. Love Jordan, number 15. Covering was Kevin Williams, the right cornerback from San Diego, and George Walker, the free safety. 
The coverage here is probably about as good as any coverage we've seen by the clones all day, but he still puts it up and he's forcing the ball a little bit into coverage there, Kurt. Third down now, 15 to go. Iowa leading 24 0, 629 to play in the first half. They have the ball on their own 46. A deep eye tailback is Eddie Phillips. They'll swing him out again. Now Grogan, there's a flag down. Grogan flows, completes it to Granger. Granger catching his fourth pass, but we have a flag down. That would have been a first down for Iowa, or will be if this penalty's not against them. I got a feeling somebody grabbed somebody back there. Mm. Or possibly he was over the line of scrimmage. That's a holding call, five yards against Iowa. Their fourth penalty. It'll wipe out the first down and put the ball back on the Iowa 41, make it third down and 20 to go. That's one of the things that coaches hate. You know the coaches cliche, mistakes will kill you? Yeah. Even though they're dominating this football game, they hate to see things like that happen. Aiden Fry has sent a play in. That's Dave Moritz, a star wide receiver. He caught 41 for 605 yards last season and was a sensation in the Peach Bowl game. Paul McCarty is yep, now in the game. Offense. All right, here's their lone setback set up. Now it's happening. Something out in the field. Third down, 15. Hayden Fry with the glasses. Well, we'll finally get this one underway. Broken the pass. Out it goes, and it is incomplete to Paul McCarty. It was right there to him. Billy McHugh covering, but the defender had his back to the ball while the receiver had it hit him in the chest. That's exactly what happened, and Grogan, you can't fault him for this pass. It's a swing and up route to McCarty, number 28, along the sideline, and that ball was thrown perfectly. Good very, pass. very catchable pass. Tom Nickel to punt. Gets off a low one to the 20 of Iowa State, 25 up to the 30. And hit there is Billy McHugh. And down the cover is Owen Gill. So, there's your score. 24-0 Iowa, 553 to go in the half. And we'll be back from Ames, Iowa. We're in Ames, Iowa. If you joined us late, Iowa scored the first time they had the ball, a 64-yard drive. A screen to uh, Granger, the fullback. He went 24 yards, and Nickel kicked a field goal of 42 yards. Then Gill galloped 31 yards, a tailback for a touchdown. And they had him 17-0 at the end of the first period. Owen Gill plowed over again two yards out, 9.08 to go in the half. And that's the scoring. Iowa State has not crossed the 50-yard line yet. Well, the things that we talked about at the very top have certainly been in evidence. The experience and the talent of Iowa, maybe the most talented team that Hayden Fry has ever had, have completely dominated this football game here in the first half. 24 zip. Archer rolling out. Not rolling the other way. He's in real trouble. He's got a man open. That's Jacobs, the fullback. And he's out of bounds. On the 33. Well, they didn't draw that up on the board. That is strictly athletic ability on the part of David Archer, number 18. We've been talking about this young man. He was a transfer from Snow Junior College in Ephraim, Utah. Interesting thing about him, Kurt, he has played for eight different coaches in the last eight years going back to high school. Run that down for us. Eight different coaches in the last eight years for David Archer. How, how'd that happen? Going back all the way to high school. Well, he played for four different coaches in high school. 
two different coaches in junior college, and since he's been here at Iowa State, he has played for Donnie Duncan and Jim Kreiner. First down, Iowa State on their own 33. There's a quick pass, complete to Jacobs. That's their little short passing game they like, but they call the ball control passing. He was hit by the linebacker, George Davis, the third stringer, as Hayden Fry now is getting second and third stringers in the game. Most people credit Bill Walsh with that term, ball control passing offense, but the first time I ever heard it used was my old college coach, Cactus Jack Curtis, back in 1957. That's when Bud Wilkinson was employing the ball control system in the split T, and Curtis came out and said, we got a ball control passing offense. Second down five, draw play. Over the 40, to the 41 is Jason Jacobs again. Hit by Dave Strobel, the massive right end. St. Paul, Minnesota. I like Jason Jacobs. I like the way he runs the ball and catches it. He's 6'1", 230 pounds. He's a senior now, and he has got some good potential. Third down. Two to go. Iowa State on its 41-yard line. They've just racked up a first down. They're looking for another one. They haven't crossed the 50-yard line yet. They don't get a first down that time as Jacobs trying to slash off the left side. Goes down and he's 42. Well, what do you do now? You're 24 points behind. You gamble here a little bit? I, I don't think it's any time to be playing it close to the vest. Jim Kreiner is not that kind of a coach anyway. So here we have a fourth and one. And uh, he's going to put it, he's going to go for the marble. He's going to come out here and do something. I wouldn't be surprised to see a little sprint out or maybe the option play or just a pitch to the tailback. And a fourth down and one. He kept it. Beautiful fake. First down and they crossed the 50 yard line for the first time in the game. I like that call. I like that call on fourth and one. When you have an athlete like David Archer at the quarterback position, the bootleg is a way you can get outside in a hurry. It's just enough hesitation there at the corner so that he can get around and get the yardage he needs. He gets a lot more than that. Big play on fourth down. Iowa State's on the Iowa 48. Archer rolling, and he's got a man open. Out of bounds is Robbie Miner, number 87. And that could be another first down for him. Zane Corbin, the right quarterback, hit him out. Robbie Miner, number 87, is a redshirt freshman, six foot, 174 pounds. He rounds off his little sideline cut because he sees that the coverage is deep, and he gets the ball from David Archer right on the numbers along the sidelines. And now the Cyclones have a drive going. Very important drive psychologically for the Clones right now because they would like to put something on the board just before halftime. Iowa ahead 24 nothing. Archer a straight drop back. He's got a man open and drop. Flag goes down. That's Dave Smolt. What a story on him, number 82. A week before he reported to practice here in August, they had a fire in the fields at his family farm, and 26% of his body was burned. They didn't know whether he'd play today. That's a backfield and motion penalty against Iowa State. He has made a remarkable recovery from those burns. He's wearing some protective covering, but they are glad to have him back because he is very important to them in their ball control passing offense at his tight end position. They have declined the penalty. Iowa State loses a down. Second down, 10 on the Iowa 36. 24 nothing Iowa, 3.19 to go in the half. Minor in motion. Archer on the sprint out, flags are down. The pass is complete to Robbie Minor, who went in motion. But we may have a holding call on Tommy Davis. Flags were dropped on the rollout. What it is, Davis wrapped up one of those Iowa men. That, here's Dave Smolt. 26% of his body burned a month ago, and here he is playing in the opening game of the 1983 season. 
You also see that he's wearing some protective coating on his face. See the white stuff on his face right there, Kurt? I looked at him in practice yesterday, and he looked like a mummy. But fortunately, those 26% burns were mostly of the superficial variety, most of the burns on his legs and his chest. Second down. They penalize him back to the 46 of Iowa. Second down and 20. 24 nothing. Iowa leading Iowa State. 314 to go in the first half. Archer throws on the run. No good. Tommy Davis caught it right on him, though. Was Tommy Wankett, number 92, from Atkinson, Illinois, the junior in. So now we have a third and very long situation, obvious pass situation. In a ball control passing offense, these are the situations you like to avoid. You prefer to get up to about a third and three to third and five. But now David Archer is going to have to get back and really drill that ball. Usually a deep curl in or a deep sideline route or something deep into one of those zones down the middle is best. Third down 20. Good protection. There's the deep pass. It is complete. Robbie Miner at the five. Bobby Miner beat Keith Hunter, the cornerback. That's a difficult catch reaching down like that. This is a good adjustment to the ball by number 87, Robbie Miner, the redshirt freshman, as the ball is underthrown. And watch how he comes back with Hunter right there and gets in front of Hunter and makes a low scooping catch and kind of uses that arm to ward Hunter off. Good play by this young freshman, Robbie Miner. First scoring threat, Iowa State are on the Iowa five-yard line. Here's the option play. He's being hemmed in, and he's tackled on the eight, Tommy Davis. He had three men waiting for him as he tried to skirt around his left end. Archer saying to himself, man, that, that one didn't go. That's when the tailback comes back to the quarterback and says, don't pitch me the ball when all those guys are waiting. That is a classic example of stringing out the option yeah. play. Eshukulo, Holly, and Corbin, who were there waiting for him, it's on the nine-yard line, second and nine to go for an Iowa State touchdown. They're trailing 24-0. He shoots it. It's in there. But he couldn't he hold dropped on it. to it. He dropped it. He had it. Miner was there, but couldn't hold on to it. Right in there to him. Miner, who made the big play moments ago, now has two catches for 53 yards, but he sure should have had this one. Sprint out action by David Archer. The flow going to the right, and Miner makes his out cut, and that ball hit him right on the numbers. Oh, that's that makes a quarterback very unhappy. Unfortunately, that play goes against his statistics when you're a quarterback, but it shouldn't. Third down, nine for a touchdown. Iowa State on the Iowa nine-yard line. They got him. The sack by Strobel. Third sack for Iowa. Dave Strobel in there. They put a rush on the entire game. He had a summer job sacking garbage. And he says now it's time to sack quarterbacks. There's your time. A minute 45 to go in the half. This young Iowa State team had gone to the five. Now they've been tossed back to the Iowa 19. They uh, time out by the referee. And we're going to have a field goal attempt for the 26. Mark Backlot from Rockford, Illinois. Red shirted last year as the lettering shows you a freshman walk on. This will be a 36 yard attempt. They had a first and five for a touchdown. Now they have a fourth and 19 for a touchdown. And Iowa is calling timeout. They'll have two left. Iowa State has its full complement. Minute 36 to go in the half. Monday night, 
ABC features San Diego, Kansas City. Kansas City beats Seattle. The spoiled Chuck Knox's debut as the Seattle coach. Now watch that San Diego game against the Jets. That's the doggone as cleverly I've ever seen that San Diego. They could be four touchdowns behind and then wipe out a lead and go down that field three or four plays. Great passing team. But they got beat by the Jets. who look very solid, by the way. And then there's a special Thursday night edition. That bitter rivalry between Cincinnati and the Cleveland Browns. American Football Conference Central rival on ABC Monday night San Diego Kansas City Thursday night Cincinnati and Cleveland. Place kick attempt. Mark Backrock. The kick is up and it is good and Iowa State has its first score of the game with a minute 31 to go in the half. A 36 yard field goal. That's important psychologically for the Cyclone to at least get some points on the board before halftime. And that kind of emotional energy that was generated on that last drive is the type of thing that could carry over into the second half. Well they took that ball from their own 20 yard line Lee and went to the five of Iowa which is a 75 yard drive then they were pushed back and got the field goal. But uh, there were some second stringers on the field for Iowa but also some of the first stringers. But it tells Iowa State those youngsters maybe hey maybe we can move this ball in the second half. It shows that they can move the ball and it shows that they've got some people at the skill positions who can execute. David Archer was very effective on that drive. In fact he should have had a touchdown. Had Robbie Miner held on to his outcut there in the end zone they'd had seven points on the board. Norm Granger and Ronnie Harmon are deep for Iowa. Mark Backrock will kick off. There's Granger. Been outstanding in this first half, running the ball, catching and blocking. He's probably been the player of the half. Back run who just kicked the 36 yard field goal. A minute 31 remaining in the first half. He's kicking into a win. He probably squib it. They like to squib it against the win, and he does squib it. Bouncing around. Iowa's up with it on the 18. Ronnie Harmon. Harmon breaking through comes over the 35 out to the 36 yard line. Uh, covering the kick is Randy Richards, number 59. Flag is down. So let's see what this one's about. That's a personal foul against Iowa State. Fifteen yarder tacked on. And here are the Hawkeyes right back again in Iowa State territory. Personal foul. Red. First down. The Hawkeyes have consistently had good field position here in the first half. 24-3 Iowa, minute 24 to go. Grogan is still the quarterback, the second stringer. He hasn't had the passing efficiency that the starter did long, who hit eight out of nine. Throws it on the run. It is broken up. It is intended for Ronnie Harmon, number 31. And is broken up by Alvin Baker, the left cornerback from Tampa, Florida. Uh, Garden City, Kansas, junior college transfer. Chuck Long was red hot, but Grogan is off to a slow start. 0 for 4 in the passing department. However, one of those was a, a catch that should have been caught. It was an easy, easy ball along the side of it. It is second down 10 for the Iowa Hawkeyes. They'll play Penn State next week. Everybody was calling that one of the most difficult games of their schedule. Penn State, if you hadn't heard, was beaten by Cincinnati today, 14 to 3. Rogan breaking away, 40, 35, has a first down to the 30-yard line. Brought down by Billy McHugh and Doug Fisher in the secondary. The clock will stop on the first down with a minute to go in the half. Grogan, like Chuck Long, is not your basic key shooting quarterback. This guy is big. He's 6'3 and 200 pounds. And you saw that time as he plowed up field that he's not afraid to run the football. He's not intimidated by linebackers. Iowa's ball, Iowa State 30. We're in the last minute of play of the first half. 24-3 Iowa. 
Coming through is Owen Gill at the 20, at the 15, he's breaking the legs at the five, and he is just short there at the one. Great looking tailback, Owen Gill, big, powerful, has the moves. He scored two touchdowns already in this game. Owen Gill has been awesome here in this first half from his tailback position. Crossfire action in the backfield. He goes off the left side, starts in, cuts back to the outside, and twists and turns his way right down all the way to the one-yard line. Eight carries for 83 yards, 29 of it on that last play. First down, goal to go, Iowa. And there goes Gill. He's over. Owen Gill has his third touchdown of the game. One-yard buck, and Iowa State let him right back up again. He had seven touchdowns all last year, so what a start he's off to. 683 yards in 1982. And now we're going to see a play that they ran effectively earlier. You get those two fullbacks out in front of you, and there is the diving tailback, once again, number 33, Owen Gill. The shoulder twist is important there. The, the corkscrew in the air on that dive. Just straight diving ahead won't get it done as well as that shoulder twist. The kick is up by Tom Nickel. He's been perfect today, and now with 32 seconds remaining in the half, it's 31 to 3 Iowa over Iowa State. Look out, you Big Ten opponents, look out. Forget all that stuff about the Big Two and the Little Eight, because you've got Ohio State, you've got Michigan, you've got Iowa, you've got Illinois. There's four right there that are all contenders. But uh, if I had to pick a team right now, I would say that Iowa rates right up there with any of them. Well, from what we've seen here today. Bear in mind, though, what everything that we said earlier about the experience versus the inexperience, a brand new program under Coach Jim Kreiner, and maybe the most talented and experienced and balanced team that Hayden Fry has had in 22 years of coaching Division I football. He's the only coach to ever be elected coach of the year in three conferences. The Southwest, the Missouri Valley, and the Big Ten. Absolutely. There's a trivia question for you. The kick is deep. Levington is down for the touchback. Iowa State puts the ball to play in the last 32 seconds of the half. Well, they just scored. Then they made one of their two penalty mistakes. They got a 15 yard. Personal foul that moved Iowa after the kickoff in Iowa State territory. Mr. Owen Gill went to work again and bang, seven more points on the board. Gill again has 89 yards in the first half. Three touchdowns. And you know, Eddie Phillips was the number one tailback last year and was leading the Big Ten when he was hurt when Owen Gill went in. And now Phillips can't get the starting job back. That's how fast Owen Gill has come. David Archer throws incomplete. Stopped the clock for 27 seconds. He was trying to get the ball to Tracy Henderson. What a difference from last year when Iowa State won this game. Iowa made only five first downs against Iowa State. This year they're running rampant. Archer on the draw play. Coming out is Jason Jacobs to the 30, 35. Stays in bounds. He's to the 38. First down, Iowa State. Zane Corloin, the uh, second string right corner, right the cornerback made the hit on him. One of the plays you need to be effective in a ball control passing offense is the draw play. And number 32, Jason Jacobs, has been very effective running this very uh, action today as Archer slips him the ball. He starts right, goes off the left side. There's the pass. It's complete. Tracy Henderson has it. Should be another first down. Iowa State at the Iowa 49. 12 seconds to go in the half. Tracy Henderson is the possession receiver for Iowa State, particularly running the curls and sideline cuts. Archer looking up at the clock. 
Ready for play. Shoots it down the middle, drops at the 31. Henderson that time, a rarity for him. He usually catches anything that's near him. Ron Holly hit him after he caught it, or missed it. Maybe you heard Holly coming. Remember, Holly's the guy who knocked down the goalpost right. last year at Michigan State. How could a man knock down the goalpost? You know he's tough. You know he's a hoss when he does that. Austin, uh, a double hoss. <laughs> well, if you knock down the goalpost, you automatically become a double hoss. That's right. Nine out of 16 for Archer. Unless he unloads this one quickly, this will be the last play of the half. They'll run the fake and then throw, and it is nearly intercepted. The clock shows time is out. That's the end of the half here at Ames, Iowa, at Iowa State Stadium. And Iowa running away with a devastating balanced attack today. Iowa at halftime, leading Iowa State 31 to 3. We'll be back with today's halftime activities after this message about an upcoming show on ABC and a word from our local station. We're waiting for the arrival of the, here comes Iowa out, their squad. The captains are on the field. They'll meet at the 50-yard line. There they are, and Chuck Long is number 16. He hit eight out of nine. They took him out, put the second stringer in. Long was almost perfect in his debut of the 1983 season. Well, to review what we said at the very top, he was the most accurate passer in the Big Ten. As we look at the halftime statistics, Kurt, look at the dominance of the Iowa Hawkeyes, 309 yards of total offense. Usually you're satisfied if you get that in an entire football game. To 141 for Iowa State. And uh, basically they have been in charge from the opening drive. First down, twice as many first downs as Iowa State. You know, they scored so quickly so many times that look at, they've been out-possessed by here, Iowa State. Here's something else that's interesting. Look at the balance that we talked about. 166 yards rushing, 143 yards passing. That's almost perfect balance. Jim Kreiner, 1980, won the uh, Division One AA National Championship at Boise State. I talked to a lot of the athletic people around here. Johnny Orr, the basketball coach, very high on the uh, young football coach. And Johnny Orr, by the way, is building Iowa State into a very respectable basketball school here in the Big Eight. But Kreiner had only nine days to recruit when he came in here. There he is, nine yeah. days of recruiting time. He got uh, a handful of players. He really started here with a handicap. When you only have nine days to recruit, you have got to make up for some lost time. But this man is a meticulous organizer. He has worked under some great coaches, including Dick Vermeil. He's been at UCLA, he's been at Cal, he's been at BYU, he's been at Utah before he took over at Boise State. While he was at Boise State, he was 59, 21, and 1, including four Big Sky Conference titles. And as you mentioned, that 1980 team went all the way to the uh, Division I AA championship. I covered them that year against Grambling. I, I watched them blow Grambling out up in Boise. I wonder how much he's borrowed from those head coaches he worked under, and, or how much of all this stuff is his. He said that his philosophy really is a conglomerate of all of those. He picked up a little bit every place he went as an assistant coach. Well, they've all done it. Yep. <laughs> Bear Bryant <laughs> used to say, I never had anything original. I just copied everybody and had the kids to do it better. But uh, the Bear always was very modest about himself. Rolick will kick off. Alex kick is coming into the end zone. He's a good deep kicker. That's why they've got him kicking off, even though he's an offensive lineman. He does the job. Here's the Iowa defense. This fellow's been good in the first half. Wank at the left end. There's Hufford at the defensive tackle, one of the three down linemen they were concerned about. Peterson, the nose guard, little the defensive tackle. Possible All-American right there, Dave Strobel, the defensive end. 
There's Yakulo, the inside linebacker. Here's Larry Station. We haven't seen him a lot. They've sort of been running away from him. We'll give you the secondary. Iowa State's ball on their own 20-yard line with a first down. 31 to 3 Iowa. Archer on a quick toss to the tailback up to the 23. Tommy Davis. And he's hit there by Howard Peterson, the nose guard. They have a fumble. Evidently they did down at the bottom of that pile, and Iowa has the ball. Larry that, Station may have got that uh, fumble. Let's watch this. This is exactly what Iowa State wanted to avoid with mistakes here in the second half because they're playing catch-up football. I cannot see who uh, covers the ball. The hit was by Hufford. Uh, maybe Larry Station was on it. Iowa's ball on the Iowa State 21-yard line. A fake. Chuck Long is keeping the ball, and he's down on the 18. Long back in at quarterback. Hit there by Steve Little, the right tackle of Iowa State. Chuck Long, Long is a cool customer. Notice how he saw that there was traffic down there and he elected not to put the ball up for grabs. He tucked it in and came off right side himself. And that's why he has always had such a very high percentage of completion. Second down seven, Iowa already ahead 31 to three as the ball on the Iowa State 18. There's a draw play to Granger. Granger rips it over the 15 to the 14 yard line, Norm Granger. Robert Youngblood, the defensive tackle for Iowa State. Barry Moore, the nose guard. The right tackle is Steve Little. Luber, the outside linebacker. Fisher inside. Washington inside. Outside is Lester Williams. Now it's third down. About three to go. Iowa on the Iowa State 14. Option play coming up. There he goes again, rolling inside the 10 to the 5. Owen Gill, who's already scored three touchdowns in this game. And he has a first down and goal to go. Wonder if they'll give it to him for his fourth touchdown. Alvin Baker and Williams, the cornerbacks. Billy McHugh. George Walker, the safety. And they've had some task trying to stop this Iowa balanced attack today. Iowa on the state three yard line first down with Granger and Bush in the backfield Bush extra blocking power Owen Gill the tailback Bush peels off here it is to Gill Gill is stopped at the one and a half yard line by Steve Thomas a reserve linebacker second down a yard and a half to go for an Iowa touchdown linebacking really the strength of this Iowa State defense the down linemen were very inexperienced and very suspect. Put it on the two yard line. Second down, two to go for an Iowa touchdown. Gill at tailback in front of him is Fred Bush. Senate sort of the, there he goes in motion, Senate. And here's the sneak over by the quarterback, Chuck Long. They just wedged it out for him, and Chuck Long, the quarterback, carries it in. Joel Hilgenberg, the son of Jerry Hilgenberg, of Iowa All-Americans fame, led the way for him. And his uncle is Wally Hilgenberg, and then there's brother Jay Hilgenberg, and the, he just uh, went straight ahead, and I think Chuck Long saw the opening. I, it may have been an automatic signal there. He saw nobody was over him. He just took it in. Long scores with 12-33. They're going to third quarter. Rogan will spot it for Tom Nichols. Nichols up again. It wobbles through. Or he did it. No, it's no good, they say. Now, went to the left. He's been kicking those wobbly field goals and points and, and getting them through. That's the first one he's missed. We'll be back with a score now. Iowa 37, Iowa State 3. Just a laugher for Chuck Long. He and Hayden Fry were exchanging a conversation down there. Both of them were laughing. I guess he laughed too with a 37 to three lead. Relics kickoff. Who's got it? It's at the one yard line coming out is Ken Anderson. Anderson out to the 20 and is driven out of bounds. 
He goes out on his own 24 yard line. Interesting piece of information on Tom Nickel who missed that extra point. Had he made that, he would have set a school record for consecutive PATs. So that's too bad that he missed it. 43 straight. He has tied the school record. Iowa State on their 24 and a half with a first down. Levingston to the left. Robbie Miner to the right. The quarterback still David Archer. He gets away. Now he throws the ball wide open at the 35 is Tracy Henderson. He may have the first down at the 36 yard line. And there's an Iowa man down. That's Howard Peterson, the nose guard. Gregory Little, George Little put the uh, heat on him first. There's the backfield. Archer, Davis, and Jacob. The, the wide outs are Henderson and Miner. Laney is a tight end, Musgrave, Reimers, Myers, Nelson, and Eggleston, the offensive line. First man we've really had down today in this field. We've had very few penalties. Might be a knee or an upper leg injury. Iowa State's committed two turnovers. Both of them were costly. Howard Peterson coming off. He's a sophomore from Bettendorf, Iowa. First down, Iowa State now. On their 36. 37 to 3, Iowa. Archer short pass complete to the 40 up to the 45 is Kirk Thomas number 33 a reserve fullback from Springfield Illinois tackled by Mike Yaculo the inside linebacker they're one yard short of a first down second down one for Iowa State that's the kind of play you like to get on first down and David Archer despite the fact that uh, that his team has been dominated has showed me that he's got a lot of poise as a quarterback Second down one. I don't know what kind of play that was. That looked like the old Utah play, the shovel pass or the flip off, except he nearly flipped it to number 77, George Little, who was there along with Kirk Thomas. Luckily, Iowa State retained the ball. Watch this one. Well, that's what it's called. They call it the Utah pass, and I'll have to credit my old coach, Jack Curtis, as the architect of that play. That was a variation of a play that we ran back in the 50s. Army, uh, we used that play so effectively against Army that the next week Navy stole it, and the announcers on national television referred to it as the Utah pass, and it's been known as that ever since. Yeah, the old shovel or flip yep. pass behind the line of scrimmage. Here's a third and five. Out it goes on a swing. Coming up to the 40, up to the 44 is Kirk Thomas. They're short of the first down, though, and Iowa State now will be in a fourth down situation. Oh, the punting team is coming on. They have a fourth down and uh, a short two. Jim Kreiner, the coach. His boy played last night. Names High School here. He went to watch him play. I think he's a reserve quarterback. And he has a brother, Wally, who is the coach at uh, Snow Junior College. Kelly Goodburn to punt to Robert Smith. Kick wobbles away. He hasn't been kicking as well as he did earlier in the game. Kelly Goodburn's out of bounds. He averaged 41 8 in the first half. We'll be back with the score Iowa 37, Iowa State 3. That's the nose guard that was injured, Howard Peterson, and uh, they're telling us they believe he has a hyperextended left knee. He's pointing on the inside. I hope it's not a cartilage or a torn ligament. That's what you worry about. 
All right, Iowa's ball first down on their 31 yard line. Long throwing on the run to Mort. It is no good. Dave Mort, Alvin Baker was chasing him. Baker had that play well covered. That gives you an idea of the strength of the arm strength of Chuck Long though because he was fading to his right and falling down as he threw the ball to Dave Morris. Watch this sprint out action. Now see the duress he's under. He's throwing that ball in extreme duress and he actually overthrows Morris who was covered very effectively by number 20 Alvin Baker along the sideline. You know Iowa hasn't hit a wide receiver in this game. The passes have been to Phillips and Granger. Good point. Second down 10 for Iowa from the 31. There's number 35, Fred Bush, will be back up fullback carrying the ball from Manasquan, New Jersey. And he's brought down at the Iowa 48 yard line. The 38 yard line. Let's check that. Third and three for the Hawkeyes. Chuck Long brings them out. Be a candidate for all Big Ten honors at quarterback this year. Bush is the fullback right in back of him. They ride it off to the tailback. Owen Gill, he's at the 50, he's still going. He's down to the 46 yard line. And let's uh, quickly go to Jim Lampley in New York, see what's going on in college football. Jimmy? Kurt Gowdy, I guess there will always be state troopers to escort the Alabama coach from the field in Legion Field, but it's a different coach now. Ray Perkins got his first college win today, Alabama beating Georgia Tech 20-7, that game final. Now back to Kurt Gowdy. First down, Iowa, on the Iowa State 46. A fake by Long. Now he shoots. Now you saw a, a, a sidearm delivery. That's his delivery. And we asked Hayden Fry, can he throw it long with that delivery? He said, absolutely. He said he's not the picture overhand passer, but he can wheel that sidearm delivery out there. Don't worry about it. He mentioned a comparison with Sonny Jurgensen. He said that he gets that ball out there a little bit. It's a three-quarter or a sidearm delivery, but he does have the strength. There you see it. And he threw it with a nice tight spiral and uh, Jonathan Hayes number 34 at the end of that reception. The Hawkeyes on the Iowa State 30. Chuck Long right to the gill. He's got a hole again. He's at the 25. He's at the 20. He's at the 10 and he goes down. He's already scored three touchdowns. He must be over 100 yards in the game. Well he had 112 yards prior to that carry and he picked up uh, how many yards 15. So let's call it. Uh, Let's say he's got 12 carries for about 130 yards. Look at the blocking in this line once again, though, and also from the guys on the outside. 13 carries for 133 yards make it now for Owen Gill, including three touchdowns. And down the road, of course, we're going to be picking an MVP. And right now, I'd say there's your front runner. That's right. On the nine-yard line, first and goal, they ride Gill this time down at the eight-yard line. Jim Lubers hopped on him there. Second down, eight to go for an Iowa touchdown. The Hawkeyes already ahead, 37-3. Uh, to three. It really looks like Hayden Fry is giving a clinic out here for tailback plays today with Owen Gill. He's been going mostly off tackle, occasionally going to the outside, and they've also used some misdirection plays very effectively. Second down, eight for a touchdown. Now they split the backfield. Gill moves up as a wing back. Norm Granger gets the call. Granger tackle and goes down at the 10 for a loss. And on him is Jim Lubers again. And also number 90, Greg Leiter. Third down, 10 to go for an Iowa touchdown. I was talking about replacing a legend. I'll never forget Bud Wilkinson was called up. He was coaching at Oklahoma when I was broadcasting their game with a young announcer and Bernie Beerman retired and I said to him, why don't you go up to Minnesota and get the job down up there? And he says, Kurt, never replace a legend. <laughs> I'd like to so, do it after the yeah. next guy. So what Bud did was just become a legend himself. So, right. That's interesting, that new logo of Iowa State. We'll talk about that. Third and ten for an Iowa touchdown. Long keeps it. Throws. 
And it's caught on the one yard line. A good catch there by the tight end. Olensack. Line Olensack. Now it's fourth down and a yard to go for an Iowa touchdown. Perfect play action fake and a roll by Chuck Long. Olensack, the, the receiver right there, making a good juggling catch close to the goal line. They get their power boys in there. 37 to 3. They want more. Iowa has Bennett and Granger, the fullbacks. There goes Bennett in motion. The pitches to Gill. Gill is they, they stop him. He was going for his fourth touchdown. Billy McHugh came up and hit him on the half yard line and stopped going, Gill. And Iowa. Comes to a halt at the one-yard line of Iowa State. We'll be back at Ames, Iowa with the score. Iowa 37, Iowa State 3. Well, Iowa State, you can't say they aren't spirited. They've fought every down of this game. They've just been outmatched physically and out-experienced by the veteran Hawkeyes. There's the score, 37 to 3, five and a half to go in the third quarter. Now Archer must work it from his one-yard line. The handoff gets a yard and nearly a safety. Tommy Davis boring over his left guard out to the two yard line. You know, uh, Aiden Fry was concerned about that uh, middle three in his front wall. He looked good today, though. They haven't Hope, made much yardage inside. Hopefully, on Peterson, who has a hyperextended knee, will not be hurt that bad because uh, one of the things he was concerned about was the drop off from the first unit to the second unit. We haven't really been able to see that today. Second down nine for the Cyclones. They're on their two yard line. And out to the four yard line comes Tommy Davis from East St. Louis, Illinois, who picked up 832 yards running last year. The yardage, as we said, has been tough inside the tackle. What were you going to tell me about that new logo? It was designed by the coach Kreiner. The next time you see the score up, you'll see a funnel, a raging funnel, which represents the Cyclone. And the Iowa State coach designed a new logo for the Iowa State football team. With the help of Anita Albert. Good. This pass is incomplete to Jason Jacobs. It's fourth down. Iowa State must kick out of its own end zone. And the Hawkeyes will be in field position again to try and punch one over. Next time we pop the score up, look for the new logo. And I think it's a very fitting and clever one for a team with the nickname Cyclone, because it looks like a raging cyclone. It is a true cyclone. The new designer and head coach at Iowa State. <laughs> he's, right. he's changing a lot of things. I'll tell you what, he's putting his own stamp on this football program here. Doug Myers now is the new punter, and Robert Smith is the safety at the 40-yard line. He's kicking against a 15-mile-an-hour breed. There's a driving spiral chasing Smith to the 50. The freshman from Dallas, Texas. Great speed trying to pick up the wall. Gets outside. There go flags down. He's at the 40, and he's chased out of bounds. Looks like the Hawkeyes have themselves a punt returner for this year. A world-class sprinter, Robert Smith, number two. I think I saw two clips along the way, Kurt. We have a clipping penalty. They'll mark off. We'll be back here with a score. Iowa 37, Iowa State 3. Back here at Ames, Iowa 37 to 3, Iowa. Ray Perkins' first victory today. I'll say one thing, Lee. He's been his own man. He took Bears Tower down. He changed the offense. They got rid of a, somebody been broadcasting the games for 25 years. He put his own man in, and he changed the shoes of the team to another brand. Uh, some of the moves weren't too popular with the old Alabama fans. But uh, as I say, Ray Perkins is his guy. First down, Iowa. Chuck Long throws the screen to Granger at the 45. Granger at the 40, coughed it up. Bye -bye. Iowa say it's in the air. Ball is in the air. The official ruled it dead. That went right to Kevin Williams, number 23. So that's the first turnover by uh, Iowa. 
Iowa State's had three turnovers. Watch the blocking form here on the screen pass. This is the play they scored on earlier. Here Granger comes up, and there's the loose ball right there. Kevin Williams, number 23, the right cornerback, gets the ball. And he is a guy who came on and made the team here in the fall, and he is a good one. First down, the Cyclones on their 38. They run that little pitch behind the line of scrimmage. The Utah pass to Jason Jacobs. That has been very ineffective for him today. <laughs> in fact, everything inside has been ineffective That's right. for him. Their only chance to yeah. me looks to be to get outside or get that passing game going to score some points. Both teams say that they incorporate gadget plays into their daily routine, which I think is good. I like that kind of football. Second down, 10 to go, Iowa State off the wing tee. Deep handoff to Tommy Davis, the tailback, again trying to go inside and slashing in from the right side with the defensive end, Dave Strobel. I like this man, the Strobel at the defensive end league. Strobel, we talked about earlier, is a good all-around athlete. He was a 6'8 high jumper in high school, and you see that he, he can play good either way. He can be good when the play's coming right at him. He's also good on pursuit. Hayden told us yesterday he thinks he's a potential All-American candidate. For sure, all Big Ten. Third down, eight. Iowa State from their 40. They're behind by 34 points. Two and a half to go in the third period. Archer, and that was deflected by number 93, Eric Hedgeman, who's made some key plays as a backup linebacker today. It was intended for Robbie Miner. He was running a simple slant pattern. He was open, but Hedgeman got his hands up there and deflected the ball. Robbie Miner lined up in the slot. He was just trying to take it right up the seam. Hedgeman, a good job of tipping the ball away. Archer now 12 of 22 in the passing department for 145 yards. Certainly respectable, but he's going up against a tough Iowa defense today. Duck Myers from Sioux City, Iowa to kick. Robert Smith is back. is a shanker. Gets on the Iowa 40, takes an Iowa bounce, is touched on the Iowa 43 while they line him up. Let's go to Jim Lampley in New York see what's new in college football. Out in Palo Alto, California, Big 8 co-favorite Oklahoma has a 16-0 lead over Stanford in the second quarter. Marcus Dupree far enough out of Barry Switzer's doghouse to start the game, but only seven carries for seven yards in the second quarter. And now let's go back to Ames, Iowa. An interesting case down there, Lee, in Oklahoma. Marcus Dupree and he and Switzer have been sort of battling in the press or the magazines and say he's not in shape, but yet doctors say he's got a couple of things wrong with him that people don't know about. Chuck Long fires deep down the sideline, broken up beautifully over there by Kevin Williams, who's been a standout at cornerback for Iowa State today. Ball was intended for Ronnie Harmon, sort of a swing man in the Iowa offense. What thing specifically does Marcus Dupree have wrong with him? Uh, they found that he has a, a, a asthma condition. Asthmatic condition. Asthmatic yeah. condition. Yeah. Also that he had a terror behind his right knee, which they say causes those hamstring pulls he gets. And that would make you also not love practice so much. That's right. Second down 10 for the Hawkeyes. This is Paul McCarthy, a four stringer, number 28, carrying the ball off the left side. This will be a good time now in the fourth quarter for Hayden Fry to look at some of his backup players, some of his younger players that he hopes to bring along as the season progresses. And for Jim Kreiner to get a better line in his young squad, give some kids some playing time, get some experience in there. That's a good point because both coaches said the same thing yesterday. They said there's a big drop off from the first unit to the second unit. And by giving that second unit a chance to play, you can bring them along a lot faster. Third down 10 for Iowa from their 48 yard line. Long sidearm toss. It's complete. He hits number 34, Jonathan Hayes, a tight end. South Fayette, Pennsylvania. And it's a first down. When you're having a good day, it all goes right for you. Look at this, though. Here's the escape dimension of Chuck Long as he makes a little move to his left. Frankly, though, Kurt, he's lucky. That yeah. ball might easily have been intercepted or at least knocked down. Went off the hands of Chris Washington into the 
arms of the receiver. Iowa has the first down now on the Iowa State 37. The give goes to McCarty, spills through. He comes over the 20, and he's down to the 15 on the quick opener. George Walker had to tackle him in a deep Iowa State secondary. There's some of those backup players you were talking about, and you can see that running behind that line, they really don't lose a lot. Here it is. It's just the, the sprint draw to the tailback. McCarty starts straight, makes a little move in, comes back to the outside, back to the inside. There you see some of his power downfield. Chuck Long now 12 of 15, passing for 193 yards. Yeah, he's excellent. Short man carries the ball. He was hit at the line of scrimmage and tumbled over to the 14-yard line. That's only a yard gain for Iowa. That's Norm Granger. Let's Chuck check Long. his yardage, Norm Granger. Norm Granger right now uh, in the rushing department, uh, we can tell you, has eight carries for 43 yards. He's also had a big day as a receiver. Owen Gill, the tailback, three touchdowns over 100 yards, over 130 yards, has been the standout offensive man in the game. Second down, nine for Iowa. We're in the last four seconds of the third period. Long keeps the ball, throws on the run to Hayes, the tight end. He loses it. He was wrapped up by George Walker, the safety man. And the clock shows that time is out for the end of the third quarter. NCAA college football, Iowa versus Iowa State, will continue after this commercial message and a word from our local station. This is Kurt Gowdy with Lee Gross Cup, and there's Hayden Fry, the Iowa coach. Very loose and relaxed right now. His team ahead 37 to 3 as we begin the fourth quarter. They have a third down and nine from the 14 yard line of Iowa State. Chuck Long's pass deflected. And is it caught by Moritz? It is. Moritz caught that ball after it was deflected. And that shows some of his alertness. He has a real nose for that football, Kurt. And it should be a first and goal to go for Iowa from the Iowa State three. Long is not only good, he's been lucky today. This is the second time a ball has been deflected in the air that one of his own receivers has come down and gotten it. Barry Moore, number 91, deflects the ball. Watch Moritz here. Moritz, let's watch his alertness. He's running a quick post route. He's down and in. Now he sees the ball tipped, and he goes for it right there. And then he covers the football. Yeah, he nearly lost it. There goes Gill. Four touchdowns. Owen Gill has tied a Iowa record of four touchdowns in a game. Larry Lawrence and Dennis Mosley are the other two players who have scored that many in a single game. Larry Lawrence against Minnesota in 1968 and Dennis Mosley against Indiana in 1979 as we see Owen Gill again going right off that right tackle and really putting on a surge as he crosses the goal line. Well that makes the score Iowa 43 Iowa State 3. And the kick by Tom Nickel is good. Iowa pouring it on, maybe not deliberately, but uh, let's just put players in there performing. The score, Iowa 44, Iowa State 3. What a day that man has had. He has scored four touchdowns. He has tied an Iowa school record for most touchdowns in a single game, 136 yards, four touchdowns. What's that average? That average looks to be about... Uh, Oh, nearly seven yards to carry for him. Here's the kickoff coming back with the ball. Richard Hansen gets it back to the Iowa State 29. Chuck Long also having a great day today, Kurt, and at his current rate, I think that he is liable to set a single game record for percentage of completions. Uh, that average you were asking me about is 8.5 yards per carry for Owen Gill. He has scored a school record four touchdowns. And between he and Long, they're going to uh, rewrite a single uh, game uh, record book today, I think. And we still have 14-27 to go. Iowa State from their 29-yard line. And they give the ball to Tommy Davis again inside and again short yardage, two or three yards. Iowa's been tough to run on. There's the third quarter stats. Continuing that same statistical story, overwhelmingly the total yards for uh, 
Iowa, 449 to 164. Look at the rushing yards, 256 to 19 for Iowa State. Second down, seven, Iowa State from their 32. Flag is down, carrying the ball. Inside is Tommy Davis. So let's see what this penalty's about. Next week, Iowa State plays Vanderbilt in Nashville, a night game. Iowa goes to Ohio to uh, Penn State. Then they have Ohio State. Now that schedule may not the next two weeks may not look quite as formidable. I did the Penn State Nebraska game. Penn State had a horrible night against Nebraska and they were beaten today by Cincinnati. Talking about scores. Here's some coming up. Final Nebraska which averaged 43 points a game last year has beaten Wyoming today 56 20. They now have averaged about 50 points a game this year. Oklahoma 16 Stanford seven at the half. Notre Dame the size of that score is the upset Notre Dame 52 over Purdue six Michigan squeezed by without its senior quarterback Steve Smith. Katie Washington State. Second down. To Tommy Davis Davis at the 30 to the 31 the stands are very quiet right now. The more scores Ohio State wins its eighth in a row. It wound up last year winning seven in a row. North Carolina good team 24 to 10 over Memphis State. 10 to 6 for new coach Ted Tallner at Southern Cal over Florida. There's well, is it a surprise now we really don't know 14 to 3 Cincinnati over Penn State. It's a surprise. Not as much of a surprise as it would have been before the Nebraska game. Third down, nine, over the head of the receiver, Levingston, Curtis Levingston, the little itty bitty guy, the freshman from Kansas City. And Iowa State has to give it up. David Archer, 13 of 24 now in the passing department, 149 yards. Not a bad day. He's been pressured most of the time. He's thrown a lot of times when he had to scramble. But Talk look about a day. There's a day for Chuck Long. 13 out of 17, 200 yards. 65% completions last year, including the Peach Bowl. We may not see him anymore. We may see Tom Grogan for the rest of the I game. I think you're right. I think they'll give the other fellow playing time. Here's a spiral to freshman Robert Smith in the 25. He cuts it through, gets to the 30. I like him. I like him the way he sees that crack and goes. They have an excellent little punt returner in this fellow. We'll be back with a score 44 to 3, favor of Iowa. Iowa's on their 42 yard line with a first down. They have Grogan now in there. Tom Grogan of Kansas City, Kansas, the second stringer. There's little Robert Smith in there as a slot man, number two, the track uh, star from Dallas. That's Ronnie Harmon. This fellow's uh, interesting, Ronnie Harmon. He's from Laureltown, New York. We've seen him as a flanker. We've seen him as a, a wing back. Now we're seeing him as a tailback. There's Pittsburgh beating Temple 35 to nothing, their second win in a row. Michigan State. Over Colorado, two teams have really been down in recent years. Kentucky, Claiborne gets the win, 31 to 12 over Kansas State. West Virginia pounds Pacific, 48 to 7. Wake Forest beat Virginia Tech, 13 to 6. George Perlis gets a win at Michigan State in his coaching debut. Coming over from the Steelers. That pass is complete to uh, Brohammer, the wing back for a first down. Not really the Steelers. He went from the Steelers to what? The Philadelphia team of the USFL. To the Philadelphia Stars. That's yeah, exactly that right. contract and went to Michigan State. Here's Brohammer all alone. He just goes by the first man, takes it up the sidelines, and Grogan is right there with the ball. No, that's uh, J.C. Love, Jordan. No, they, no, it's Brohammer. <laughs> We've got those numbers still reversed. It is first down for the Iowa Hawkeyes on the Iowa State 30 yard line. That's Harmon. Harmon tripped up and goes down on the 29 yard line of Iowa State. On the tackle is number 47. And there's Alabama. Ray Perkins winning his first game. 
as the head coach, Missouri beat Illinois 28-18 today. Washington 34, Northwestern nothing. Don James, another good club out there. Mississippi 23, Tulane 20 in the fourth period. Second down, nine to go. Iowa on the Iowa State 29-yard line. Harmon stopped and for a loss. They'll spot him down at the 31-yard line. Lester Williams, the cornerback. Williams has uh, really been, been on a more plays today than their potential All-American Chris Washington. Chris Washington gets the ink, but Lester Williams has really been the most active linebacker today. Now it's on the 31 of uh, Iowa State. Third down, 11 to go for the Hawkeyes. Turned into be a good day for football today. Yesterday, yeah. we thought it was going to be a steam bath out there. It was 108 degrees on the field for yesterday's practice. Uh, we had rain, uh, rain at game time, and now the sun's out. The weather's cooled off. There's Grogan. Grogan pitches the ball out. Perfect timing on the pitch at the 20, running it to the 15. Ronnie Harmon, he's out of bounds. What a perfect time on that pitch out. You really should wait till that commitment of the last second and then pitch it out. But that's what causes fumbles in that option offense. That's exactly what happens as he forces it at the corner. Now watch Grogan. He gets by the first man, brings it out to the corner, and with his left hand, he pitches to number 31, Ronnie Harmon, the trailing tailback. Harmon shows you a little uh, juke step right there. He fakes in. He stays out. Gets a block from Fred Bush, number 35, and takes it upfield into scoring territory. Iowa has a first down on the Iowa State 12-yard line. The option play again. There's a pitch to Harmon. Harmon is wrapped up and down at the 12-yard line. They were right on him that time. Doug Fisher from Massillon, Ohio, the inside linebacker, with some aid from Steve Thomas of Cincinnati, who plays the outside linebacker. Kurt, I think you have to go back all the way to the days of Forrest Evashevsky when uh, he had those great Iowa teams in the 50s to, to think of this kind of talent. They really have it at all positions. Yeah, this could be one of the best Iowa teams of all time. You're right. Those clubs that went out trampled to Oregon State and California in the Rose Bowl. They have this kind of talent on this team. Iowa went to the Rose Bowl a couple years ago but got beat 28-0 by Washington. Grogan. End zone pass, incomplete. Intended for Bill Happel, a reserve flanker from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Watch the defense here, Lee. Defense handling the wide receiver right here. Now, number 25, Anthony Davis, is on the coverage. He's going to follow his man all the way across the field, and on the individual coverage, he reaches out and gets his left hand on the ball just in the nick of time. So it's third and 10 for Iowa. They're on the Iowa State 12. They're leading 44 to three. With nine and a half minutes to go. Grogan hasn't had the passing statistics Chuck Long. Not many will have those. Here's the rollout play. He goes down at the 17. Stumbled over his own feet. He's disgusted with himself. Fourth and 15 for Iowa. And the field goal team is coming on. You're going to get a chance to see what Kurt Gowdy was talking about. He, at one point here, he starts to throw, and he pumps a little bit too hard right here, and then he just loses his balance and goes down on his own. This will be a 34-yard field goal attempt. Earlier, Nickel kicked a 42-yarder in the game. He finally missed an extra point after tying the school record with 43 in a row. There's his kick. The kick is up, and it is no good. Very wide to the left. He really hooked it. Missed the 34-yarder. So with 8.39 to go in this game, the score remains Iowa 44, Iowa State 3. And we are back at uh, Iowa State Stadium in Ames, Iowa. Lee Gross Cup along with Kurt Gowdy. Kurt Gowdy lighting up his traditional victory cigar. No, I'm not Red Arback. Why, why do you feel so victorious now? Uh, I'm just relaxing. It's on the 20-yard <laughs> line of Iowa State, 8.39 to go. They leave Archer in there. Archer uh, goes to throw the ball, and it somehow, was it, was it, I don't know what it slipped out of his it, hand. It slipped out, out of his hand. And nearly intercepted by Iowa. Remember that it's been very humid here, and uh, we, we thought that there would be more of that today, but the rain kind of cooled things off a little bit. 
the air is not as muggy as it once was, but it's still a little thick down there. <laughs> as we were saying, they were talking about that uh, Hayden Fry team that played Ohio State. Through 76 passes at Ohio State, they were outweighed 61 pounds to a man. Chuck Hickson threw 69 of them in that game in 1968, and then they put in the backup quarterback, and he threw seven more. <laughs> That game must have been five hours and 14 minutes long. If it was on television, it would be about uh, four and a half, five hours of uh, on camera, on mic. Third down, a yard to go for the Cyclone. Tracy Henderson grabbed that last pass. Now they run inside, and there's big number 93. He's been outstanding, Eric Hedgeman, a backup uh, linebacker. We haven't had a report. I don't know whether there's anything wrong with Larry Station. He hasn't played much in the second half. They're short of a first down, fourth and a foot to go, but Hedgeman has made four or five key plays. There's Jim Kreiner. Fourth and one to go. A very, very quiet crowd here at Ames, Iowa. They came here with high expectations, ushering in a new era. Iowa was favored. A little to know how all around excellent is this Iowa team. Offensive line outstanding, good running backs, great passing. The defense has been tough. There's a soaring Cyril, little Robert. He's one of another department has been good today. There he is squirming away. He nearly came up the crack and got him at the 31. I believe he's going to break a couple this year, Lee. That uh, Robert Smith, the freshman from Dallas, a world class sprinter. He knows where those openings are, and bang, he goes right to him, and with that speed, he'll cut it right through. Well, he's awfully cute. He's 5'11 and 175, and he's he thought he should have had a test yeah. on that one. He's shown us some moves today. I like him a lot. Iowa has a first down just over their 30-yard line. Hayden Fry likes him a lot, too. Did you see that? Sure. Next Saturday, regional action in NCAA college football here on uh, ABC. Live, 3.30 Eastern Time. Check your local listings for the game and times in your area. Brogan to Ronnie Harmon. Harmon trying to sweep, and he goes down at the 30. And he's hit there by Anthony Davis. There was an Anthony Davis that played for USC some years ago. Back. Era Parsegian will tell you definitely that there was an Anthony Davis who played for six USC. Touchdowns. Yeah, against Notre Dame. You got it. Where is Anthony Davis now? Let's see how your memory is. I don't know. He's drifted around. Did he wind up in the, one of the new football leagues? That's right. He's with the uh, Los Angeles Express in the United States Football League and was mostly on their taxi squad this year, but he did make the roster. Pacific Palisades, California is where he's living. Second down, 10. Rogan on a rollout. Comes up to the 32-yard line. What'd you think of that Notre Dame score today? Jerry Faust been under the gun. Uh, I think 11 wins, 10 losses at a tie, something like that. His first two years, and uh, he's supposed to have good material this year, and uh, was uh, supposedly to have a tough game with Purdue, and they ran away with him, 52 to six. I have a feeling that this will be the year that uh, Faust program arrives at Notre Dame. I think now that Blair Keel has had four years at the uh, helm as quarterback that he is going to have a sensational season. The Irish are loaded. 44 to three, five and a half minutes to play, and so is Iowa loaded with that big lead. Penn State next week, then Ohio State and Illinois. Iowa State plays Vanderbilt next Saturday night. Here's a screen maybe they're setting up. They throw it on the run, it's incomplete. Ronnie Harmon, the intended receiver. Punt formation. There's the Hawk. Tom Nickel to do the punting. He doesn't get too far back, and he just gets that one away, and there's a flag down. Now the, this could be running into the kicker, but he was blocked into the kicker, but that still doesn't matter under the new rule. There are two penalties. Running into the kicker is five yards. 
roughing the kicker flagrantly at 15 yards and an automatic first down. If the kicker is, watch this now, I believe they blocked the man into him. Fred Bush. He is. That's what. That's exactly what happened. Him. And even though that is still running into the kicker. Kevin Williams, number 23, was blocked into the kicker by Fred Bush, number 35. Now, uh, in the pros, when you when you do that, it's a different matter. So they got the, t the new rule of the two penalty, running into the kicker, five yards, and if you really go in there and slam him or slam the holder, I mean a flagrant uh, hit, they'll tack 15 on you. Now they're debating it around. Hayden Fry, he's ahead 44-3, and he's arguing this one out or trying to find out what's going on. We're going to bring it back. After the uh, committee conference, I think this is going to be running into the kicker. It is. He was blocked in there, but it still doesn't matter. Five-yard penalty, running into the kicker. No first down, fourth down. That's it. Good call by the officials. That's the new rule. I like the way you're on top of that rule book, Kurt Gowdy. Well, that's the rule, the new one. Another new rule is a safety man. You can't get within two yards of him on the ball on his downward flight. Remember how they used to go down and stare him in the face as the ball was coming down to him? We'll be back with 5.04 to go in the score, 44 to 3, Iowa. Five minutes and four seconds to go at Ames, Iowa. Sellout crowd, over 50,000. Been a very quiet crowd, except for the uh, Iowa fans that have been here. Iowa City's about 150 miles from Ames, Iowa, where the University of Iowa is, and Niall Kinnick Field. Alan Hood's now in a quarterback for the first time in the game. Legendary Niall Kinnick, 1939 at Iowa. Great name. The Iron Man. There's a fumble. Iowa has the ball. How many times have you seen that happen? New quarterback, first exchange, mess up. Iowa recovers. The third turnover by Iowa State. And that was wrapped up by Dave Chambers. Those were the Iron Men of Iowa, that 39 team. Coached by a very good friend of mine who came on to Holy Cross when I was doing the Red Sox game, Dr. Eddie Anderson, an eye surgeon, legendary man in Iowa football history, coach. Good stuff. He Good. created he created some uh, very uh, advanced uh, surgical techniques in eye operation, Lee, and still with the football coach. First down, Iowa, on the Iowa State 36-yard line. That's Cornelius Robertson. Now check that. Is he in there, quarterback? I believe he is. That's Trey Jackson now they've got in there, number 42. He's a four-stringer. Robertson's a third-string quarterback. So Bill Fry, or, uh, Hayden Fry's down to his third and fourth players now. Third and four deep, four and a half to go, 44 to three, Iowa. Bad beating inflicted on the Iowa State Cyclones. Here he comes again, trying to get outside. Trey Jackson. You can see he doesn't have that ability to turn up field the way uh, Owen Gill does. Anthony Davis brought him down. The Chevy players of the game. There's Owen Gill, four touchdowns today, 136 yards, the most valuable player for Born in Jamaica, went to London, then came to America. A rugby player, former soccer player. Now, quite a tailback in the Iowa scheme of things. Here's a third down play at nine. Passes incomplete. And the Chevy most valuable player of Iowa State is... And it's Lester Williams, number 45. And what a day he has had. He has been active both on pursuit and good plays coming right at him. Uh, he has really overshadowed uh, Chris Washington, number 54, the All-American candidate. So in his name, $1,000 to the General Scholarship Fund in the name of Lester Williams of Iowa State. Five-yard illegal use of hands. Deep line, down and four. Iowa 
Legal use of hands, five yard penalty declined. It'll bring up fourth down and nine. Tough choice for uh, Iowa. They had so many good players today. How do you leave Chuck Long out of there, you might say? Long had 13 out of 17, did he leave? 13 out of 17, 204 yards, one touchdown. And unofficially, that is the best single game percentage in Iowa history, 76.4%. Well, Jim Kreiner, the new coach, ran into two records today, a single-game passing efficiency record by an Iowa quarterback and a record tied four touchdowns by Owen Gill. It was tough, but, uh, but Gill broke some big ones to bust this game wide open. Monday, the Chargers and Fouts and his gang against the Kansas City Chiefs. And Thursday night, the Cincinnati Bengals off to a stumbling start against the Raiders will play the Cleveland Browns, beaten and also in their first game. Now, who knows about that? The 49ers lost their first game. Look what they did to the Vikings in the second game. 41 points in the first half. Oh. A punt formation for Iowa with 3.42 to go. Nickel, only about 10 yards behind. Look at this. Go down that on the two yard line. Everything's worked for him today. Very few mistakes by the veteran Iowa team. And you know who was down there on the punt? Owen Gill. There he is. Look at him playing on the punt team. Scored four touchdowns. Over 130 yards rushing. He's down there downing a punt. Already been our Chevy player, and he's still down there on special units. Now, you know the coach's cliche he came to play? Yeah. Owen Gill came to play today. We have an emergency message for Dr. Jerry Plummer. think he really came to play? I think the man definitely came to play, Kurt. I've said that so many times. 334 remaining. Iowa leading Iowa State 44 to 3. What's your favorite coach's cliche? <laughs> I'll let you think about that one. Yeah. Wait till I look at the film. <laughs> All right, I'll buy that one. Alan Hood's out incomplete with the pass. Alan Hood, a sophomore from St. Louis, Missouri. It'll be second and 10 for Iowa State. Tenant for Mike Posey, number 85. This kind of game that can get a young squad down now for quite a while or you think this kids will forget about it? No, I don't think so because they really didn't have that much expected of them. They knew that they had a new program. They've got a lot of uh, young kids. In fact, their team has so many freshmen and sophomores that they're referred to as the baby brigade at, uh, at Iowa State. And they know it's going to take some time to bring this team along. Second down, 10, Iowa State from the three. The pitch goes to... Richard Hansen, number 37, from LaPorte, California. Time moving along. We're approaching three minutes left. Iowa's anywhere from a seven, ten point favorite. They probably would have been higher, but fans remembered that the last three games, Iowa State's defeated Iowa. Four of the last six times that they have played since they resumed the rivalry in 1977, Iowa State has won. Uh, Hayden Fry's made it up with a vengeance today, and don't believe that uh, he didn't want to win this when he sort of downgraded the game. There's the keeper by Allen Hood. Fumble, and Iowa has the ball. And that's Dave Chambers on it, number eight. Dave Chambers recovers. Here he's coming off, number eight. Fourth turnover by Iowa State. And they give Iowa a chance to score again with 2.43 remaining. Two of those since they got their new quarterback in there. There's the guys, that one of the guys we talked about, Chuck Long, having a great day today. George Little, Little number 77, right yeah, next baby. to him. Yeah, He's a hoss. They say Long is very relaxed, that player. Not much bothers him. Very, very poised is Chuck Long, and he really believes in the team concept. First and goal to go for the Iowa Hawkeyes on the Iowa State nine-yard line. Jackson, Trey Jackson, Jackson plows to the six or seven yard line with the clock moving. Two and a half minutes to go. A lot of the fans have already filed out of Second Iowa State Jackson Stadium. At the six, second and goal. Well, we had a late arriving crowd and an early leaving crowd. The rain kept them out for a while and the scores moved them out early. 
Second down, six to go for an Iowa touchdown. Jackson again, and Jackson is over for the touchdown. Trey Jackson scoring. Oh, he's happy. He just sort of powered his own way in on that one. Jackson, the tailback on a play that has been effective all day. It's the crossfire action once again. Instead of taking it inside, he jukes to the outside. And he, look at the extra effort right here, Kurt, as he battles his way. And all that has to happen is for the ball to break the plane of the goal line. And he does a lot more than that. He gets well into the end zone. Iowa was placed in the top 20 in all those polls. There's a kick up by uh, Nicholas Good. Uh, those preseason polls, some of them ranked them 16th. I think after today, you'll see Iowa in the top 10 next week, for sure. 51 to 3 Iowa, and we'll be back. Well, you can see how uh, many of the fans have left the game as Iowa will kick off with a 51 to 3 lead. This is a, one of the most one sided games in the history of this rivalry. The 31st meeting. Iowa's about to win its 19th game, the 12 for Iowa State. Levinson on the 11, out to the 20, to the 25, to the 30, and runs out of bounds and stops the clock at the 36-yard line of Iowa State. As Lee told you, the Cyclones lead the series 4-2 since this renewal in 1977. They were out of business, these two schools, against each other for 40-some years. Hawkeyes' last win over Iowa State came in 79, 30-14. This, this has to be one of the most one-sided victories. It might be the most one-sided yeah. victory. We'll check that out. And by the way, there's a minute 51 to go in the game. Iowa's about to win its fourth consecutive game. They closed the end of last year with three wins in a row, eight of their last ten. The hit. Ken Anderson. They got some backup players who'll put the hat on you, too. Yeah. On the 35 yard line. Hayden Fry held eight first stringers out of Spring Grills. He wanted his team to come into the fall physically ready. No nagging injuries and no lingering injuries. That ball hits the ground. That's not a lateral pass. No, he said right, uh, passing up spring practice may have set him back a little in development, but I'd rather have him healthy and set back in development. So. I think that's smart. I think to me that's a very uh, professional attitude on his part. and uh, It shows the type of experience that he has had. He's got 22 years now as a Division I coach. You, you made the point earlier that he's the only coach to ever be coach of the year in three different conferences. That's the Southwest Conference, the Missouri Valley, and Big Ten. The Big Ten. We have a third and 11 for Iowa State. Alan Hood tosses it down the middle. It's completed the 45 to the 40 to the 30 is Mike Posey. He's at the 10 and he's over. Mike Posey scores. Mike Posey, number 85, caught a down and in route from Alan Hood, number 12, the quarterback, and really blazed his way into the end zone, 65 yards. It comes off of a play action fake. There's the quick post route right there, and you see Posey right here shifting gears, taking it to the outside and burning his way into the end zone, and that's the type of play that can give a team some momentum going into the following week. It's the type of thing that really excites the coaches to know that you've got players who will not give up despite the fact that it's such a lopsided game. He's only a freshman from Great Town, Missouri. Now the try for points by Matt Rose. He kicks it up, and it is good. 
So Iowa State with 53 seconds to go comes up with a touchdown and is now Iowa 51 and Iowa State 10. And the Iowa State fans haven't lost hard either. You know, at least speaking of Iowa, they're all sold out for every home game in football this year and every home game in basketball. 65,000 in football and 15-5 in basketball. I don't know of many schools that sell out every home game in football and basketball in advance. Well, the sports fans in the state of Iowa are certainly uh, enthusiastic. We saw that at the place where we were staying this morning. They were all over there, and of course, the Iowa fans are going to root for Iowa today. The Iowa State fans are going to root for Iowa State. Alan Hood just had his first completion in college, by the way, the sophomore from St. Louis, Missouri, a 65-yarder for a touchdown. That's a nice break-in. And Mike Posey just had his first catch. They'll remember that the rest of their lives, that battery of Hood to Posey, 65 yards, the first for each. Here's the kick. Nobody's down there. They just booted out. They were looking for the onside kick. It'll be a touchback. Clock stops. 53 seconds to go. It'll be a first down for Iowa. Ahead, 51 to 10. Iowa and Penn State next week. Iowa State and Vanderbilt next week. Despite the fact that this game has been so lopsided, Kurt, I think this is the start of a bright new rivalry between Hayden Fry and Jim Kreiner. I think that uh, Kreiner is going to turn the program around here. Uh, as have some other successful coaches in the past. Earl Bruce was here. Johnny Majors was here. Earl Bruce did a good job of turning it around before he went on to Ohio State. Cornelius Robertson, the third string quarterback for Iowa. He's going to throw it. Maybe he gets it away and it's completed the 30 up to the 35 to the 40 and running it up to the uh, Trey Jackson gets it up to the 42. That's a questionable call, of course, throwing. But remember, this is the quarterback who may never get to play again the rest of the year. He wants <laughs> to go in and show his stuff. They're not really, they're not trying to uh, to run the score up. The quarterback just wants to exercise his arm. You know, good teams, two or three deep, you send those second and third stringers in, they're eager, and they want to show a coaching staff what they can of do. Course. They'll of run course. the score up on ability sometimes, sure. not on desire. There's another good pass by. That's Robert Smith, this freshman. I like this kid. He's a flash. Robert Smith, the freshman from Dallas. You're going to be hearing a lot of him. What about that arm by Cornelius Robertson? Boy, he's got a buggy whip arm. Did you see how he whipped that thing that time? Well, you're right, though, about one thing. This is Chuck Long. What was his uh, percent today? 13 out of 17? 13 of 17. He's just a junior. 76%. Yeah, and 65% last year, and he's only a junior. We're down to the last 10 seconds. Cornelius keeping the ball, still got it. Look at him with one hand, is fumble or not. And the clock shows the game is over. That's it, the final score. Iowa ends a three-game Iowa State winning streak against the Hawkeyes. Iowa 51, Iowa State 10. We'll be back for the wrap-up here at Ames, Iowa. As both clubs go off, Final again, 51 to 10. A veteran Iowa team, skilled in many departments, had just too many weapons today for an inexperienced young Iowa State team, and Iowa rolls to a 51 to 10 victory. They led at halftime, 31-3. They dominated the entire game. Stay tuned now for the Prudential College scoreboard to bring you up to date on all of today's games from around the nation. Travel arrangements made through in a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies to Hong Kong for more top business centers with three class Royal Pacific service. This, from Ames, Iowa, has been a presentation of ABC Sports.